Intrepid has been on kind of like a little quiet, little quiet spree the last couple months. But this whole year has been banger after banger. And this is going to be an update on the artisanship uh, system, which for a lot of the economy branches of the guilds and stuff like that, people have been looking forward to this for a very long time. So it's uh, quite a big update. Um, and we'll see if we get an alpha 2, you know, timeline update. Um, they were supposed to let us know on, I, I don't know, what is it? Um, the, the quarter that it's going to be released, I believe. So we'll see if we, we can get a closer date to see when we're going to be going into the game. And with that. Rocking and rolling and kicking major butts. Um, but yeah, it's course, always. Oh, go ahead. It's always interesting. The end of the year, we have these two back-to-back -back streams in November and December, and then our longest uh, stream until the end of January. So. That's true, because January is so long. That's true. Yes. Um, but, of course, I'm Margaret Crone. I'm the director of communications here at Intrepid Studios, and with me, as always, is Stephen Sharif, our creative director. And we have a whole slew of things for you. Uh, Loud we enough. have some quick reminders. We're going to try to go through this pretty quick. Uh, artisanship preview, which I think a lot of you crafters out there are probably really excited about this. We've had a lot of questions. Um, and, of course, to preface, we will. this is going to Turn be it up a little bit. core functioning stuff, so not super in-depth. Um, in regards to like manual crafting, but we'll go, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And of course, if you have questions, feel free to pop those in to the, uh, you know, Twitch channel, uh, discord. And of course, uh, we have a watch party on discord right now. So there's a lot of places yes. for you to interact with us. Our community team is full <laughs> throttle. Um, so of course we are always pulling those in after those segments as well. Um, and then we'll have like a quick little studio update, art update, and then do our Q and a as well. Uh, like a forum Q and A that we always pull from. But before we do that, we do have our spotlight. Uh, whoops, wrong one. There we go. Our spotlight comment. So if you uh, on our development updates, leave a comment. Subscribe to us. Uh, you may be selected. Make sure that you have it so that we can see that you're subscribed to us, and then you will maybe get your comment selected. It's random. So um, today's comment is from Pa Beats, and they would like to know. It's less of a question, more of a statement. Caravans are my number one most loved feature when it comes to MMOs. This is uh, this this is it. I will pre-order the game first thing, uh, uh, first time in like 15 years. P.S. Would love to see the other side of that feature, uh, specifically how a party of robbers attacks a caravan and how they can then flee and sell it to a fence or something of that sort. Mm. Um, and yeah, I figure we could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, this yeah, a absolutely. A statement and uh, if yeah, you no, know, I, we showed off caravans. So if you're curious about those, definitely check I, that out. There's a lot of people in the studio that share uh, uh, that excitement uh, for caravans as a system. Um, it is the epitome of risk versus reward, obviously, and and knowing that that is a core pillar of of a lot of the system's design in Ashes. Um, caravans represent that very well. Um, you know, it, it took a lot of work to kind of get caravans to a place that felt good, both from a drivability perspective, but also from a customization perspective as it relates to crafting unique components. Before we get too far into this, I am so unaware of how loud the audio is. So <clears throat> bear with me. I'm trying to figure out my audio for, you know, browsers and stuff like that still. So hold up. I apologize. I'm live. Um. Okay, so you can hear me. And creating these vehicles that live in stalls that are located at different nodes, and and kind of their summoning mechanic, and you know leveraging them. And then if I talk, these cargo and materials that are so vital to the economy, um, you know, all of that is. Okay, I like that. Okay. Uh. That, that volume is fine. Okay, so I'm going to go back and rewind, and we'll start back from here. Um, today's comment is from Pa Beats, and they would like to know, it's less of a question, more of a statement. Caravans are my number one most loved feature 
when it comes to MMOs. This is live uh, this tech uh, this is tech issues. I will pre-order the game the first thing. Uh, uh, first time in like 50 I'm not a producer. Years. I have that so excuse. I'd love to see the other side of that feature, uh, specifically how a party of robbers attacks a caravan and how they can then flee and sell it to a fence or something of that sort. Mm. Um, and yeah, I figure we could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so yeah, a absolutely. A statement and uh, if yeah, you no, know, I... we showed off caravans. So if you're curious about those, definitely check I... that out. There's a lot of people in the studio that share uh, uh, that excitement uh, for caravans as a system. Um, it is the epitome of risk versus reward, obviously, and and knowing that that is a core pillar of of a lot of the system's design in Ashes. Um, caravans represent that very well. Um, you know, it, it took a lot of work to kind of kick caravans to a place that felt good, both from a drivability perspective, but also from a customization perspective as it relates to crafting unique components and creating these vehicles that live in stalls that are located at different nodes and, and kind of their summoning mechanic and, you know, leveraging them for the transit of these cargo and materials that are so vital to the economy. Um, you know, all of that in a fantasy world, you know, you might see that in games like uh, an Eve or, or something that's a little bit more sci-fi with transport, but it's not often seen in fantasy style games. And Ooh. so I think that's super cool. Um, obviously, uh, when we talk about the PVP element of them and that risk, um, I am happy to announce that in January, we will be uh, showcasing this, is, I guess, a little bit of a leak of things to come, but <clears throat> We Leak. will be showcasing a large PvP battle uh, around caravans, and you guys will get to see a little bit of the caravan uh, raft uh, take place as well. We should be in a good spot for that uh, come January. Ooh, a raft? Um, so that's going to be really exciting, I think, for people to see. I know that we've had raft caravan? Uh, the last few streams have been kind of focused um, around uh, mechanics within Ashes that aren't combat or PvP related. Um, that's a good thing because what makes the world go round in Vera uh, is obviously those types of systems, <clears throat> and it makes the, uh, the events where player conflict does occur that much more exciting because of how much it took to kind of set the stage uh, for a high risk reward type encounter. And that's what caravans are all about. So January is going to be a really fun thing to see, uh, I believe. And, and you guys are going to be uh, uh, There's happily definitely a lot surprised. of questions regarding uh, the PVP element of just our game in general. And of course, uh, when we showcased the caravan system, there were a lot of follow up questions in regards to how PVP would play into that. And of course, we had already planned to share that. But the caravan system alone is such an in-depth system and the PVP mm -hmm. on top of that is. So we just split those up. Hopefully you all understand yeah. that. And of course we didn't want to put too much pressure on those teams right back to back. So, <laughs> you know, kind of giving a little love here and there. Um, but of course, um, I think I misspoke last month. I meant to say that uh, in our, in the December, like at the end of the year, we are going to share the quarter. I believe that's what we had said mm. earlier on as well when we announced the 2024 uh, Alpha 2 uh, timeline as well. Uh, and I, th I think I misspoke and said next live stream when I meant to say like at the end of the year. Um, so we will be announcing what quarter Alpha 2 will be next live stream in December's live stream to make it very clear. Apologies yeah, not, for the not gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. It's only we're only a few weeks away from that actually. Like, yeah, that's like true. We said. We're not that far away. Yes. Um, yeah, we got a lot of testing that's been Rip. that's been going on over the course of that this answers month. that question. And, uh, obviously, December is going to be a big month when it comes to testing as well. I made a little bit of commentary about that uh, um, in the Discord. Uh, things are heating up for sure, but I do want to temper expectations. I want to remind everybody that this is alpha, alpha. testing, <laughs> right? And so, because of that, you know, as always, you can look historically at how far the game has come year after year, the improvements that get made, and what we're about to show you right now, which is a little over an hour long uh, showcase regarding all things artisanship, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, I made a post in Discord yesterday that just went over kind of all the types of updates that we're going to see. And I want to I want to reiterate them here before we actually move to uh, to the video segment. And I know a lot of you guys take your hour your hour break to kind of watch this uh, to watch our live stream. More, uh, oh, you, yo, I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought that was my cue. No, go, go through no, the reminders and then I'll yet. do that. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, no, go. Okay. You're good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of let people know that that was a misspoke, misspoke, uh, misspoke on my, on my side. 
Um, yep. And of course, we do want to thank you all for helping us raise money for Extra Life. What an amazing campaign that we oh uh, have as, as a team. You're wonderful. I, I mean, we can't thank you guys enough for what you've done that for Radio this month. Yeah. I feel like that was a year ago already. I know. <laughs> um, but we did put it. Stephen been working uh, hard. Uh, it also has and team. winners too. And we've all the winners have been reached out to and given their rewards. I think the last of rewards are the three thank you videos, which we're going to be recording right after this and sending out. So everyone should be getting all of their things or have information on, on when your things are going to be shipped to you. So I uh, just wanted to reiterate that to folks. Um, yeah. And, I, and, and just to. So. And just a last, uh, a last parting comment uh, regards to to extra life. Those of you who didn't get to participate or didn't and didn't get to take a look, I think that um, as a community, we we need to um, we need to celebrate our accomplishments. And yeah. uh, it is a really cool thing that we as a community have come together <laughs> over the course of the last several years to raise over three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars <throat> for Radies Children's Hospital, and that is. That is truly something um, that is unique about the Ashes community. I mean, we're not even in our game yet playing, right? And we have come to as a community very strongly and are capable of doing these things that help others and demonstrate the quality of what it means to be an Ashes of Creation community member. Um, and that's something that I think is very unique, and it's something that we should be proud of and that we should carry with us to the other gaming Stonks. communities that we are a part of. And, and <clears throat> you know, we're all an eclectic bunch of gamers. We enjoy lots of different games. Um, the cause that, that Extra Life presents I think is a worthwhile one. And it is something that <clears throat> touches the hearts of people who are gamers just like you and I, like Margaret and I. Um, and it's really something that's noticeable for 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 us to come together and perform like that. So kudos to you guys out in the community. That is truly something remarkable. And I can't wait to see what even crazier things we get to do in the future as we get closer and closer to launch and then post-launch as well um, and how we can integrate Ashes of Creation into more of those type of things. So. Uh, thank you all. And of course, our community is just amazing as, as a whole. So <laughs> we love how much you all interact with us on all of the platforms. So keep keep that up. And I know it's only going to get crazier when we start doing more guild stuff because we are definitely going to expand to more of that. Ooh, as we get, like, and, and do that let's too. go. Because guilds are very important. But of course, I just want to remind you that we do have some dev discussions up. We have our um, dev discussion for respawn times. Um, so if you have not partaken in that, we are going to be wrapping up our reporting for that. So please feel free to pop in there. Give us some some of your thoughts. Of course, you can even after our reporting still continue to give us feedback. We always go back and double check things, but I uh, did want to do that. And of course, I wanted to live, give you a little teaser. Uh, Wagner shared that the next one will be on drop rarity. And so if you have feelings Ooh. and thoughts on drop rarity, which I know most of y'all out there do. Let me see how I can get any like initial drop rarity because... I have a love hate relationship with rare drops. Rare drops in general feel bad, but when you get it, you feel hype. I think I would rather drop rates be lower or like have drop rates be higher, like so that you get the item more often. But the harder the creature is you fight against or um or the thing is like it drops like maybe 50 percent of the time but only like one person in the party can have it like that type of thing where that that kind of interaction stuff happens i'm not entirely sure if i actually like that idea but that is my initial just like gut reaction feel like, I like knowing what's going to drop from monsters and being able to get it without having to spend hours upon hours upon hours grinding the same mob over and over. But at the same time... I like my rare item. I like being the, the person that has that really cool thing because I spent a lot of time on it. So I'm not really sure where I land on this, to be honest. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of controversial takes on either or. And it's probably just going to be like somewhere in the middle. Or, yeah, it'll probably end up somewhere in the middle. And I'm fine with that. That's the only way. I, that's the only thing I can think of for like drop rarity. 
Because I can think of so many games where I'm just like, I've been fighting, especially for quest items. Quest items being like fucking awful drop rates are terrible. I'd rather I just kill the mob 20 times instead of having to search for an item in this percentage chance that it's going to drop where it can either happen in the first three minutes or in the first four hours, you know? Um, so yeah, I would rather have, um, well, I guess there's one ways to get around like quest drop items too, like, like crit chance in league. Like there's a percentage chance that you crit and each time that you don't crit, um the chance uh doubles in size so like or or it's just like adding on uh subsequent like a sum value of the drop rate so it's like if it was uh if i didn't get on the first mob kill and it was a three percent drop rate then on the second kill then it's a six percent drop rate third kill nine percent drop rate so on so forth um until it's a 100% drop rate. It's like uh, the Mercy system in like Lost Ark on like your honing honing gear. Um, I'd be fine with that for like questing and like regular drops or something like that. Or like even super rare drops that have like a 0.01% chance, you know? If I kill x amount of creatures in <clears throat> within like a certain amount of time or something like that it, it the system accounts for that i don't know how they would do that systemically but that's like another option that they could possibly do if they really want to have low drop rates and really um allow players to grab gear it's the only thing i can think of other than that, I'm, I have mixed feelings. I have mixed feelings either way. Because we are going to be compiling a report for the dev team in regards to that. Also, I don't have an asset for this because it's more of a, a surprise thing. Uh, we always do something kind of cool and fun or silly during the holidays, but our next uh, one is going to be a bonus dev discussion. It's going to be a special holiday delicious dev discussion. For those of you who have partaken in the past, we've made some really cool recipes and things like that, uh, and especially tying in with the artisanship stuff for those who enjoy cooking and things of that sort. Uh, you definitely want to head over to the forums next week and vote on which Varen holiday recipe you would like to see, um, and we'll be putting some of those out to share with you guys uh, for the holiday season. And hopefully some people will make them and then you send us pictures. Yeah, be that really would cool. be super cool. <laughs> What if what if some people did make them and we had a little bit of like uh, some alpha keys that we gave out Ooh. for the best version of those recipes? I don't At know. Best, that could be we, interesting. It'd be hard. We'd have to do a whole uh, campaign oh, that's for that. True. But that's true. We could do community voting. Could, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking. we can figure something out. We might. Margaret's we like Stephen. Maybe... No. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to do something like that. Definitely contest in the future. But I think we might be able to give some alpha keys away if people make some stuff and share it with us. Yeah. As like bonus, cool. not not contest oriented. Um, yes. We'll see. That's... There you we'll, go. We'll talk. We'll discuss on that front. Um, and of <laughs> course, uh, just a reminder that the unseen order uh, will be ending January seventeenth. Uh, I know that some people uh, just want to make sure that they're being conscious of that. So if you would like a pre-order pack, this is the last time we will be offering a pre-order pack specifically. So if you would like that, definitely head on over there and snag yourself one. And with that, Stephen, I will hand it over to you to do some prefacing. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's everybody breathe together on stream. Breathing. We want to breathe in. <laughs> hold and breathe out. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so <laughs> as a reminder, this stream is going to be focused on artisanship as a whole. And um, artisanship in the economy is a, obviously a very integral component of, of creating Literally a everything. world where progression matters, um, where decisions and choices matter, um, uh, the world state that is constantly in flux and changing around you is very relevant as it relates to supply and demand within the economy. That creates opportunity. It also creates, unfortunately, downsides and downturns. Um, but that keeps a market interesting, right? <clears throat> it also and makes you so, remember things. The times when yeah. you're having struggle, when you win and overcome Absolutely. those, is like the things you remember the most. I mean, imagine your favorite 
guild moments are usually when you're like, we tried 10 times on the boss, but then we finally oh, yeah. beat it, right? A hundred percent. I mean, some of the, um, <clears throat> some of the more interesting moments that I've had in other games, um, was where there were unique, um, there were unique and um, scarce resources that everyone was contending for, right? And those created, I think, uh, very emergent and dynamic interactions between the players. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> that was that was interesting. Um, but yeah, when you increase the item's power or the ability to get something, or no, sorry, let me rephrase that. When you increase something's power and it's supply so the demand is high supply is low people gravitate towards that thing and it becomes what's known in the game world as a meta it is meta to have something that is so insanely broken but not a lot of people have but everybody needs to get that thing if they want to be like top tier at the game or if they want their class to be top tier at doing the thing that they like to do. Um, anyways, I think I've had the most fun when there is just a bunch of broken shit and nobody knows what the meta is, personally. So if there's a lot of scarce things and a lot of it is broken, a lot of it can be fun but it can be aggravating for other people as well. Um, so I guess all these things are something to keep in mind when you're developing this stuff. Okay, so what we're going to see today is not just about artisanship. Um, it is also going to be related to um, several changes that happen within uh, the game over time. And so being that this is the end of the year or coming close to the end of the year, um, you're going to see a number of different updates to uh, several different systems. You're going to see uh, some updates on the UI front, a little bit more explanation and perhaps a clearer picture for you as it relates to spatial management and the inventory systems. Nice. Um, that's obviously something that is a, a, a unique to the gathering system. You're going to see significant updates to game lighting. Um, when we showed the night and day cycle uh, in the past, there was a resounding feedback from the community uh, to see a bit darker uh, exploration for the night times. Nice. Uh, nice. To bring that, that, that field of view in um, a bit more. <clears throat> and so we've updated that. Um, you're also going to see some significant changes from our tech art team uh, with the skybox and our volumetric clouds. Okay. Um, I think it's something that, that creates They're a already more good. dramatic atmosphere uh, within this video. You're going to see the first showcase of processing and how processing works uh, from a station's perspective. These are going to be um, these are going to be systems that allow players within the node who may not have a freehold to still participate in some levels of processing. Um, and that's a that's an important uh, distinction between what's available on freeholds and what's available within nodes. You're going to see <clears throat> get a little bit of insight to um, to predicate systems that that relate to what you can access in the wild you know we've we made this change a while ago that everything is accessible obviously uh, from a resource gathering perspective uh, however we do gatekeep some of the access points to progression within the profession um, and you're going to see the certification a, a very low level certification process um, that's quest driven uh, you're not going to see that whole certification process uh, but you are going to see um, how those how those resources are restricted. You're also going to see some tool making, kind of the initial tools that you'll get as a as a as a gatherer, um, <clears throat> which is going to be uh, uh, quest related uh, to start, uh, and then you'll have to be making those tools yourself. You're going to see a little bit of our recipe system and the recipe book, uh, as well as the other crafting stations for those recipes. We're going to be specifically crafting a weapon in this video, um, and you're not going to see all of the accurate recipe components necessary to craft the weapon uh but you are going to see um a, a version of that right now okay um you're also going so to they're basically just saying this is not how Alpha you actually build the item um, which is our corruption zones and the corruption zones are um um 
uh, are something obviously that changes within the world state. Uh, and the world state is a very important aspect of what resources are available at what time. Corruption spreads as players do not respond to it appropriately. It can be the predicate for events. It can be the predicate for story arcs uh, to kick off. Um, and it does dynamically change the spawners within the world. Uh, something that's unique, obviously, to Ashes of Creation is that world state change affecting the supply and demand of resources. Nice. And you're going to see a little bit of our adaptive resource. And from that, you're going to see a little bit of our adaptive resource gathering uh, tech updates uh, where you see those resources change from night to day or from uh, corrupt to not corrupt. Uh, and then there is going to be a little bit of a leak of uh, a couple of ranger skills. Um, Let's go. I will give you another leak that next month we are going to be doing the ranger showcase again. There's 18 new abilities with Let's the new archetype kit that we're going to show off. Um, and I think that uh, you guys will have a fun time with that. Uh, but we did have to dispatch a few wolves while we were out looking for resources during this uh, <laughs> live stream. So with that being said, I do want to leave off with the last disclaimer. As you all know what I'm about to say. Everything this is still alpha. <laughs> yes, that's right. This is still alpha. This is still a work in progress. Things only get better from this point forward. But as is our responsibility, we want to show you how things are progressing. And we want to do so so that you're able to provide us feedback on the directionality you see through these showcases and can let us know how this relates to your experiences, how this is something you want to see or what you would change differently. So keep in mind as you're watching, what are the points of feedback that you want to give us? You can give them to us on YouTube, which will be released shortly after this uh, live stream. We have a thread that we'll have up. Um, that's the best Absolutely. way because it makes it the easiest for us to compile. It is. It is the best way forums, but I know not of you are key, not a lot yeah. of you are keyboard warriors on the forum. So if you want to be uh, out on the Discord or on the social hours, medias, um, if you want, if you prefer to talk, and then of course any social platform, like Stephen was saying, you can leave us feedback. Yes, on, absolutely. Um, let me think. Was that the last thing? Was that the last thing? I think that's. The last I think thing. that was the last thing. We will see you guys it's in just like over one of those an hour. Where you're like packing when you leave for a trip, and you're like, "Did I bring everything?" I know. Did I got my I phone? I got my wallet. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right. We'll see you guys we'll in just a little bit. Side. Nice. Okay. And I have the YouTube pulled up right here, so it, we get to see it in all of its. 4K glory. Turn it down a little bit. Quite loud. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another stream from Vera. And we have a very exciting stream for you today. We are going to be going. Holy shit! It's an hour and six minutes. System, and it has been a little while since we last talked about artisanship and showcased um, the gathering, and we're going to do a little bit of that today. And we also, during our uh, last stream with uh, Freeholds, talked a little bit about processing, and we're going to be doing that uh, today as well. And we're also going to be crafting something pretty interesting. And I have joining me four of our glorious team here at Intrepid. Some of them regulars. I think all of them actually regulars have been on the stream before. Um, we have two of our glorious designers. Uh, do look Corey. good. Mike, Corey, how are you guys doing? Doing good. How are you? Glad to be here. Doing very good. I'm excited to show off what you guys have been working on and how far it's come since people last saw it. Yeah, we are on the here. Winstead windmill, by the way. It's very exciting for us. Yes. We also have joining us one of our glorious engineers, Alex. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. How are you? Doing very good. You have been doing a lot of work on the engineering side of things, getting all these glorious designs Looks up so and running. Looks so pretty. To take a look at that today as well. Yeah, it's been a challenge. <laughs> uh, to fulfill all the wishes of my designers. Not <laughs> <laughs> bad, was it? They're like, wait, all of our wishes? <laughs> um, nice. The one that passed visibility. Yeah. <laughs> we also have joining us uh, for this is your second time now, Nathan, our glorious yeah, producer, the, the Nathan. Feature. I know, back to back. I know. The artisanship is the peanut butter to the jelly that is node, so I'm super excited to show how these start interacting with each other. Yes, it is totally, 100%. And you guys have done a great job so far. It's the Tower uh, of Carfin in the really distance. Pushing it, uh, this last 
this last sprint, and uh, it has definitely shown through to me, so I'm excited to show the audience. Um, all right, so why don't we talk a little bit a bit a little bit about what we're going to be doing today? Corey? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so um, you had brought up that you had done a little uh, lumberjacking, uh, but we're kind of interested in getting into some mining and herbalism. Uh, because you picked up a recipe. Um, I think it's like, uh, you were saying that's a pretty nice sword or something. Oh, so okay. Let me take a look at that. Is that that's going to be in my inventory? It, yeah, it should be in your inventory, yeah. Um, so I was thinking we could go out and uh, get some of the stuff that we would need to um, night blade make recipe. that sword. Okay. Uh, some of them are a little harder to come by, so I'm not sure whether or not we'll be able to get our hands on that. If not, I think we might have some stuff for you. But um, yeah, okay. I guess... Uh, we just need to kind of get our get our stuff together. Um, as as you mentioned, uh, or as I mentioned, you you already did some lumberjacking, but yes. we'll probably need to get you um, uh, herbalism sickle okay. and uh, maybe some extra bags so you have some space. Um, like so yeah, let's idea. uh, yeah, let's make our way over to the agricultural supply. I think there there's one of those built in uh, Winstead right now, so we can head down there and. Um, so now talk to me a little bit about, obviously we have <clears throat> this recipe. Um, when players are looking to create different items in the game, they're going to need to go out and either uh, purchase or get drops of recipes or trade with other players. And when they acquire that recipe like I have here, this it says Night Blade. I can use the recipe and I will learn a weaponsmithing recipe for the Night Blade. So I have a recipe book that I get to keep, essentially. I learn these recipes once. Yep, pretty much. Um, there might be some unique cases where some recipes might have a charge count, so when you craft it five times, it might disappear, but generally, most of the cases, all the recipes should be permanently learned. Okay, Interesting. Nice. that's very cool. Um, and right-clicking this is going to consume it, I assume, but I'm, I do get a preview of the materials that we need, and Corey, this is what you were talking a little bit about. Going out and collecting some of these, there's a Night Opal Moon Bell. I assume that is some type of flower? Yeah, so... Um, uh, the night opal and the moon bells are those are the ones that I was kind of alluding to that are a little difficult to get our hands on um, the night opals you basically can't see them at all during the day uh, but um, as it gets closer to night if they're in the world they'll sort of uh, um, uh, push away their shell and start shining a bit and then the uh, the, the uh, moon bells uh, only bloom at night so we'll have to kind of you know Maybe we'll work on some of the other uh, things that you need for the recipe, and uh, hopefully nighttime will come around and we can uh, find some of those things. Okay. Okay, very cool. So I'm going to right-click this recipe to learn it. <clears throat> Let's see here. Oh, very cool. Okay, it says, learned new recipe, night blade. Okay. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> now Perfect. where are we going to go to get the sickle mentioned? Oh, yeah. So right over here. Um, oh, okay. They got this area in kind of the back alley of the... Town. Yeah, so if you head through here, oh, this is the agricultural supply. They got the snores. Um, this is one of the you know service buildings that you can build in the node. This one kind of focuses specifically on artisanship, and you'll find stuff for herbalism, farming, and animal husbandry here. Um, so if you talk to um, Mr. Willie over here, Willie. Um, yeah, so he, if you talk to him, he should um, give you some stuff that you can use to construct your uh, first sickle. So, okay. And then uh, once, once you have those things, there's a little anvil here over here to your left, um, and you can craft the sickle there. And then I think once you have the sickle, you can talk to him, and um, it'll it'll complete the quest and, and you know, give you your first sickle. You'll be ready to go. This guy is incredibly rude. We need to have a conversation with the narrative team about how these, these <laughs> vendors speak to the citizens of this village. This is unbelievable. Uh. He yeah, said he just know, can't. He, he can't teach yeah. just any drifter. Am I just any drifter? Does he not see the crown on this I, helmet? Well, I guess mm. not. Yeah, we'll have to add I the mean, uh, mayoral um, narrative tags just so they can uh, and up their respectful speech. He's not even going to pay me too for achieving these many tasks he has for me. 
He's paying you in experience. That is as... not enough. Oh, man. <laughs> I've uh, had those jobs before. Same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so good. That was so good. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Oh, no. Okay, I have achieved this quest. It's called right. Feast of Flowers. So we gotta do a quest awesome. in order to... Uh, so do you, he wants uh... me to show him my crude sickle. Nice. You should do that. We'll turn away. Oh, here. <laughs> Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is going to be one of those streams. <laughs> okay. Welcome. All right. So um, what do I need to do with this? Uh, come over here uh, next to the anvil. All right. Yeah, and you? Yeah. So there's a an little anvil right here. Uh, we can interact with that, and that should pull up the, the crafting menu. So as a, uh, as a gatherer, you'll be able to craft your own tools. Um, uh, they're going to take, you know, resources that come from all sorts of different uh, professions. You won't be able to, you know, always source all of those things just just yourself. But um, uh, luckily, you know, Willie's nice and he gave you some um, some components and you can kind of just throw them together to make your first uh, your first sickle here. So nice. Nice. go through with the go through the craft. You should get that thing and, you know, show it to him and um, he'll give you a little. Okay pat on the back all and right so send now, you on now this is a this is a great example as we kind of um players as you're entering into alpha 2 and, and you're wanting to get started into um artisanship these different professions will have a number of quests available to introduce players to their first tool sets um and then from there tool set sustainability will be will be, will be incumbent on the player to continue to gather the resources necessary to repeatedly create these tools because they have a durability that gets expended when interacting with the resources in the open. Okay. Makes exactly. sense. All right. Okay, so I'm going to talk to him again. And yes, I made the sickle. Um, okay, now he's criticizing my crude work. Um, okay, okay. All right, but that's fine. He... Uh, and we all know what your first mayor, mayoral like decision is going to be is <laughs> destroy agriculture supply. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is going to destroy fund the agricultural supply. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Yeah. All right, very cool. So oh, I yeah, now... you... oh you can preview it in uh, Arden's page actually. Uh, yeah, once you once you there you go. You should have your rewards now. There you go. Equipped to artisan tool slot. Very cool. So now it is in my artisan awesome. tool slot. Should I open that and take a look here? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, cool. Uh, yeah. So we have that panel open. This is kind of like the the hub for all artisanship stuff. I think we poked around here a little bit um, in some of the previous streams. But see a little bit of skill uh, right percentage. There, I like that. That's really cool. The, the tool types um, for each of our five gathering professions. So, awesome. um, it looks like you have one of each of the tools that we're looking to use today. Um, and also no, kind of notice very progressed in my. Uh in my lumberjacking oh yeah you said you're like what level are you i'm like level nine i'm about to be level 10. oh that's awesome okay so like while we're out and about you'll if you hit level 10 you should be able to uh, upgrade your certification to apprentice and that's one of our uh, certification breakpoints um and you know once you each, yeah, hit those breakpoints it kind of opens up a whole new uh, range of stuff say? that you can do, new tools. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> um, a new portion of your skill tree. So we should for sure um, That's wonderful. get you that level 10 and see what happens. I love the little well, NPCs soon. walking around. For a journey. Oh, where oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. makes the town feel lively. We so need to get some potential bags. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we talked about this in the past with the, with the Tetris inventory, um, kind of having... Uh, different spatial layouts um, of our bags and also our um, our, our resources and so uh, we've been working on that a little bit and um, trying to set up bags that have uh, spaces that are optimal for you know the the shapes that are going to be associated with the resources and um, having stats on on the bags that will change you know the, the stack size and how much you can stack stuff up right. so um, since we're going out we're going to collect a bunch of stuff uh, you should grab one of the um, uh, bountiful bags from from Willie, and then we'll go over to the stoneworks and see if we can grab a I, mining bag. I also bag see that well. um, Willie has a number of different uh, farmer shirts and novice herbalism or herbalist skivvies. Do I want any gear from this? Um, yeah, it's up to you. I mean, there's so there's gear for all of the different um, crafting, gathering, and processing professions that'll help you, you know, do do those uh, different trades. So. 
Um, it, it's up to you. Like if if you you said you're higher level in lumberjacking, so you know you could grab some of that stuff um, to kind of compound on the stats, make you make you faster at chopping, or oh, should I go maybe over find some that guy stuff, buy so. that stuff? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So from yeah. this guy, let me purchase. This all seems pretty straightforward so uh, far. Bags. Yeah, once you grab, yeah, grab the bountiful bag from you him. You get some bags. You get great. some. Um, I think they other have vendor supplies that you can have, them, and so you can uh, stack up more herbs um, in that bag than you can in, in others. Um, I see also, that there is a novice herbalism bag. And if yeah. you scroll down on the bottom, there is Aelin herbalism basket. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna grab the basket. Yeah. Oh, it's cheaper. Done. I got one of those. Sweet. Do awesome. Do I need anything else? Do I need any other bags? Uh, yeah, let's run over oh, no, it's two this gold. way to the stoneworks. The other one was like There's one another, gold. Another uh, gentleman over here that we can talk to. Kind of standing by this Like crane. stone masonry? Um, and you can do the same thing from him. Throw throw a little Stonework. gold at him and he'll give you some give you some bags and stuff. I'll get, um, um, from this guy, the stone... Got a bountiful Novice mining bountiful bag. Mining bag. Novice bountiful. Okay, got it. Awesome. So now those those bags should be in your inventory, um, and if you right-click them, they'll equip. And then if you go over to your materials tab, um, you should be able to see uh, those new bags that we got. Okay, so just real quick, you were speaking earlier about the unique stack sizes as being part of the um, kind of asymmetric design for bag crafting. Um, mm -hmm. And these bags have specifically curated benefits for stack sizes of the type of resources they relate to and that's the specific profession of gathering and the resources you would gain from those those different unique professions so by equipping this herbalism bag whoops let's see here um and then also let me just open up the materials section and this one i see now i've actually gotten a unique looking um, structure for okay. the Aelin It's got its own task. little background too. And those are the types of structures that you would expect them. That's to pretty good. That are you can kind of tell which bag is what. Correct. 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 Yeah. So that's not necessarily to say that I can't collect non-herbalism resources. I could, and I could mm -hmm. put them in that bag, but it just wouldn't utilize the most beneficial aspect of it, which is the higher stack count for those types of herbalism resources. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We can also, um, you know, there can also be constraints on the on the shape, right? Like um, we were talking about, like you can kind of see. Um, I, I'm not sure what materials you you have in your bags, but like I, I have a couple pieces of wood that are, you know, uh, one by three, and so you know, in in the herbalism bag, I'm not sure that there's any any slots for for uh, pieces of wood that are that size, right? So um, some there'll be some constraints and um, benefits in terms of shape and then also you know the the stack size based on the on the type so okay cool, okay. Very cool. Uh, so now like, let's uh, oh, good, yeah, go ahead mike so a good example would be if you equip the mining bag as well on top of the herbalism bag um you'll be able to see the shapes are different but um you can see the mining bags are two by twos and herbalism bags are so we can say like these are two by twos. These are four by fours. This one is just like a general resource bag and it's one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. So this holds 12 spots. This holds 10. This holds 10. Uh, well, I guess technically it holds uh, four by five, which is 20. So this holds 20, but there's might not be a resource like a log that can't f that can fit in the mining bag. I like this. And it doesn't say that there's like a max amount of bags that you can equip. I don't, I don't know if there is, but the inventory being separated from the materials is really nice. Um, it looks like these stack up to twenty uh, logs, so they they do stack up to a certain amount, and then you have to go back and do stuff. I kind of like this. Uh, we'll see how it actually plays out in, in game. Because um, this could be frustrating, could be fun, but the reason why it has to be some sort of limitation on resource gathering is because if there is no limitation on resource gathering, then the caravan system becomes like 
null. Like the point of the whole caravan system is to move these materials, is to create that conflict in that world. If materials are not limited, then there's no point to use a caravan. And so this system has to be in place in order for the caravan system to exist. Um, one by twos. So you can technically put herbs into your mining bags, but you won't get the benefit of the stack bonuses of the mining stuff, right? Oh, and they uh, give stack sorry, bonuses, cool. so you can stack more. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Please. So if you had like a lumberjack um, also, bag, then um, it may be thirty the instead of twenty logs. Might be very restrictive in sizes. So like uh, the novice mining bags and novice herbalism bags are very shape restrictive. But as you level up and then make better bags, it might be more generous of um, shapes. So you could technically do some other things as well and then have more bigger sizes and have be able to uh, hold more variety of things as well okay i like that i like that that's a lot I, I think that's pretty cool should should we go to the lumberjack to grab those were you talking about some um equipment that he might have that might help us with our lumberjack oh yeah definitely I yeah level that up sweet oh yeah, i see okay is... hold on let me see here i have an i also have a quest that relates to we rise after felling oh yeah that's so that's the certification quest so um as you mentioned before you know there we're um we're we're planning on having some some content related to you know onboarding players to the different professions and you know you're going to need a tool for the first time and um, you're going to want to craft a thing for the first time and kind of learn how to do those things. Uh, but we also want to extend that out to kind of more of a, a individual story arc, um, like experience for players. Um, so as you, as you become a better lumberjack, you'll, 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 uh, play out your story as, as a lumberjack. So, um, these different certification quests, That's cool. um, are, are meant to be kind of uh, keystone moments in that story progression. So, you know, right now we have something kind of you know, simple set up. Uh, it looks like I like that a lot. It, it makes it so that crafting isn't simply just like a side job to do. It is like an actual career that you can like go towards in in terms of like questing and like your character's lore. Um, a lot of players won't find that cool, but I, I do. You already had collected all of the the wood that you needed, right? But um, you also need to reach the level needed to even be take on an apprenticeship. So, um, so I, th I think, yeah. See, see what he's got. Um, I'd check out some of the gear. I think that will, um, since you're already pretty pretty good with the wood chopping, you could probably get a little a little faster with the gear that he has. So he does have, <clears throat> he has a shirt, pants, um, and I think that oh, and a tool belt. And, and yeah, each of them are yeah, yeah. giving different benefits. Looks like I'm getting lumberjacking speed from the pants and from the shirt. And the tool belt's going to give me processing. Um, oh, I think you might be looking at lumber milling. Oh, that's yes. Lumber oh, well, My bad. Yeah. Lumber yeah, so at this at this service building, um, we're we're housing another three professions. So there's there's carpentry stuff here. There's the lumber milling stuff here. And there's also the lumberjacking stuff here. So um, Woody's going to have stuff from, from all three. Um, if you're looking to do any, you know, uh, woodworking related activities, uh, he's your guy. So, um, you, and, and that's sort of what we mentioned when we were showing the nodes uh, in a live stream a few months ago was like your ability to build buildings to really cater to uh, the important industries to your hmm. region or to, or to your node. Yeah. Yeah just take a look here i know this is obviously guys okay so he's got I wanna three equipment spots again, so you can only um when you're looking over here you have he's got his lumberjack stuff so you can't just keep wearing this gear um for like every single thing i mean technically you could you could just keep it in your inventory and then swap it out whenever you're doing uh stuff out in the world but do you really want to do that how beneficial is it pretty interesting um but yeah they they do mention that you want to be swapping gear out um to fit your needs and this is another aspect of their design where they want you to be wearing gear to do the thing that you like to do better uh so we'll see how how that plays out as well i imagine people are just going to keep like if they're going to go out like gathering 
you're just gonna keep a bunch of these gear and then like swap them out real quick and then go get the the thing if it if it greatly improves but if it doesn't greatly improve then there's no real reason to buy it um so a lot of this will become like useless uh unless you're doing that thing a lot that one thing a lot um uh, but yeah you'd have to go to like different spots or like spots that are only geared to like the artisanship that you're trying to raise your level in um there are going to be ways that people game the system but i don't hate it i don't think it hurts the game by putting it in even if it gives like a slight benefit i don't think it, i don't think it hurts and I don't think it makes it absolutely necessary that you have to have these things either. So I don't like it. Um, whether it's there or not, I don't think it matters too much. But it could help people min-max if they really wanted to. Uh, showcase, but uh, everything you see here is still a work in progress. We are working towards our Alpha 2. Um, that includes things like visual effects, like uh, UI. These are all very functional states, but not necessarily at their polished states. Um, so still a lot of work that needs to be done there. I noticed that um, we have three slots for the, uh, the equipment that I just put on, and they're not displaying visually, uh, but we do intend to provide that visual display as an option to the characters, correct? Correct, yeah. It would be a toggleable thing that players could be do um, in I like the that. future when we get some assets. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Absolutely, yeah. there's a lot of assets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us. So, what should we do here? We want to go out and gather some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we we're we we're kind of scouting out there uh, beforehand, and we know we know a pretty good spot. Um, if you're if you're heading out, kind of past the smithy. You should see a good old tower of Carfin out there in the distance. And if you head uh, a little bit east of that, um, you can kind of see some like rock formations up there. That's where we're heading. There's a nice little um, little valley in there. Um, has I think it has pretty much everything that we're looking for. So, okay. <coughs> I love the autumn look out here. I think the it fits perfectly for this time of year. I mean, yeah, we definitely. Could, nice. We could just have Thanksgiving. Feels kind of a little Indeed. bit like Thanksgiving out here. It does it does feel like Thanksgiving? It's beautiful. I, I really like the colors. It's turning out really good. Absolutely. It's my favorite season uh, so far. Oh, By the really? way, does Vera have Thanksgiving too, or no? Hey, no trying to get lore out of me. This is an <laughs> artisanship focus. <laughs> Give us and the one lore. thing you I won't try. leak during a live stream. I know. Right? <laughs> the lore. The uh, one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I really love uh, the leaves falling down effect. Yeah. Just when you're walking yeah. by. Nice. Speaking of, yes. of leaks, however, I know that I am uh, playing a <laughs> ranger class. You might see a couple of early uh, look at the ranger skills here in case we run into any potential resistances. Um, but next month we are doing a ranger update and it's going to be pretty fun too. Nice. Little leak. Nice. I see excited. It's, it's okay for skill abilities, but not for the That lore. may be my main class. <laughs> that oh, is true. Man. That is true. The lore is safely Unbelievable. Uh, so we do have, we have some wolves. Uh, someone's chopping out there. It looks like he has pets, dropping. and I don't yeah. really like pets. Oh, it's a nice shift R, or shift T. In the distance. Could just oh, be mounts. There. That's great. That's uh, over to the left. Uh, I think he's up on that are hill. Are you trying to beat me into the... Uh... Wait, here we go. I'll chop down some trees, too. Oh, we do. We, this is ash. We need oak, though, right? Or do I need oak? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that ash will be, be. be helpful. Nathan just trying to become Grandmaster before you, Steven. Exactly. I will leave oh, this land a barren wasteland. He's, There'll he's be a, no trees for you to chop. He sick some. Uh, I feel like he pulled it on purpose. Yeah. All 76, 126, 101 seemed like a critical hit. 126. I think he's in tab. Because Steven's a tab player, he's not an action yeah, combat get the, player. Get a few of these oaks, at least enough to level up. And then we need to find some basalt. Yeah. Basalt is going to have the zinc and copper. Uh, that you need. Oh, here's some oh, over on the ridge. Where at? Um, oh, yeah, up the cliff. Basalt. Yeah, can you see me? Ooh, that area looks kind of twisted and gross. A little bit of corruption? Yeah. Ooh, wait, did he just take damage? Wolf. Where? Oh. He clicks. Just using his basic attack. 
pulls it for extra damage on the longbow. Really, really basic. Not using a ton of abilities or anything like that. So, no leak yet. Town aren't doing their job. Fight back the corruption. Old neighborhood's Fight going on. Ruby's here too. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, Ruby. Yeah, you can grab those. Here, yeah, it's not us. Yeah, there these are the new rubies that we just introduced with uh, Chaos Physics enabled. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, um, uh, thanks to Noah and uh, some magic from engineering. Uh, when you see it gather, mm. it's, you see that shutters. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Love that. Yes. That's super cool. That's amazing. Additionally, yeah, if you open your backspace now, um, you'll see that your mining bag has now rubies and it prioritized <laughs> based on your stack size. Nice. Oh, let me see here. Hold on. First, let me gather a little bit of. Um, Look for some basalt. Yeah, I think there's some over here. Basalt over here. To the right. There's one right there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Right here. Yep. No, this is opal. Nope. Right oh, here. Opal, I can't even interact with the Opal. No, it's right here. Yeah. Bustle. There we go. Oh, don't we need Opal? We, we... I think so. I think we need Night Opal, which oh, is the right. one that only really appears at night. Um, okay. Interesting. Oh, I've gotten some Man. Zinc and Basalt. Okay. Nice. Okay, so you got lucky. You got the you got the drop chance. So this gave me yeah, two really... things. It gave me it gave me zinc as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're when you're mining stone, like we're trying to we're trying to do stuff that makes sense, right, with the drops. So you know, in stone, you'll find metal and gems, and you know, depending on the you know the tier and the type of type of stone, um, there'll be different kind of selection of gems and stuff that you can get in it, uh, or or metals. So um, you nice. may, if you're trying to target a certain you know metal you might want to consider um some particular stone as well and um as you get better at, at uh binding and doing stone related stuff you'll kind of learn learn the ropes there so you can make better decisions okay that's cool Additionally, minute, as you, gather, you can actually notice that your um durability goes down for your tools oh really let's see Using this pickaxe, it's at 95. Nice. All right, you got plenty of plenty of durability left. It's good to good to repair when you get into town, though. So it kind of sucks when you find something real nice and. So you found regular basalt and some copper in there. Won't be able to hit it. Ah, nice. <laughs> and I really love the, the physics. It's like I remember in the gathering stream. You know, we we're showing off um, uh, the trees and kind of like set up precedent with how that looks and Ooh, now we have to make all the other stuff uh, just yes. as cool so the the rocks and gems and metal are like kind of a big big uh hurdle for us oh. and Tree keeps rolling. having it in a place where it's oh starting to look God. really good well, that was super exciting that was a cool that was actually really cool that should definitely knock you over or kill you <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh i love them Let's go. Ding. Hey, there we go. Oh, I've reached nice. level 10. Oh my god, that just killed Mike. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> Trees can't kill me. Grab some, some daffodils, right, maybe? Yeah. So you, level, you leveled up, you said? Yes, it said I leveled up. Ah, uh, okay, well, you gotta... Okay, so nice. when, you, when you level up, you're gonna get some skill points, and you should be able to put those in your, in your skill tree. Um, you should uh, oh, yeah. pop that open. There we go. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah. I have a bunch already allocated, but now I have two new points. Oh, nice. Yeah, you should spend those and book around in the tree a little bit. But yeah, um, that is uh, something that we're wanting to do with our artisanship. Both you I know, like in, this. Our, in all three of the branches, you'll you'll have skill trees for your profession. So those skill trees, you'll be able to find you know passives that'll give you uh, stat bonuses and you know predicates for extra functionality within whatever the profession is. Access the stations. Um, expanding out some of the various systems like you know you can see some of the surveying ones right like you can uh, add extra pylons or um extra uh, scanning range and lower the cooldown on how often you can survey so uh, we're trying to make those trees uh, interesting and give people you know different paths so they can progress through that's cool oh that's cool yeah very cool <clears throat> um so obviously I'm looking at this uh, the skill tree right now, and I see one side is dealing primarily with yield, the other side is dealing with <clears throat> um, 
excuse me, with rarity, with quality, um, the other side dealing with yield, <clears throat> and then the survey system. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about um, the survey system. Yeah, so surveying um, is uh, something that we're trying to use for gatherers to really kind of interact with uh, the things that we want to do with our dynamic world. Uh, one of that, is, one of those things is we want to be able to spawn stuff randomly, and we want to put it in mm. uh, places in the world that will make people, you know, travel and uh, bolster up our um, our local player-to-player -player economies. Have people, you know, kind of actually be out in the world looking for stuff and not um, standing in the same place waiting for a tree or a flower to respawn over and over again. So oh, there's a moon bell. We're kind of we're kind of having uh, the best of the both worlds, where we have our lower tier stuff that will fill out, you know, the the base look of our world so that it's always kind of looking good, um, and then the higher tier stuff from apprentice onward will will always kind of spawn randomly in in places that we've deemed looked. Uh, you know, look good and make sense for what that thing is. Nice. Um, so surveying is a way that you can uh, track that stuff down. Um, it will help you uh, find places, it will help you find particular resources, it will help you find resources at a certain rarity. Um, and yeah, so it should be, you know, something you could do as a gatherer on your own or group up with other people to uh, bolster up the, the um, the power of your survey or the, the, the range or reach of it. Corrupted so, oak. Um, yeah. Oh, it says I need a higher certification for this tree. It's oh. Corrupted oak. Gotcha. Well, you just leveled up, so I bet you if we went back to town Oh, my and... God. There's some fucking crazy... Or excuse me. There's some... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We're going to need to bleep that Oops, out. Bleep that out. <laughs> There's some dude up there. That's awesome. Oh, wait. I would say the same thing if I saw that. I know. Oh, <laughs> ancient horror. He's oh, away from fuck. a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's back, it up, back a up a little bit. Yes. Yep. Holy oh, shit, that thing price, looks terrifying. Oh, no, no, one second. Backspace, yes. Let me open that up. That's so I sick. Have, um, three copper. That's one of those titans. 22 basalt, 17 zinc, uh, 5 ruby, a number of dandelions, and daffodils. Daffodils. With some plant fibers. Okay, that's cool. And a bunch of nice. uh, wood. And as you notice, the, all of those materials actually are sorted nicely in the appropriate bag space on your uh, stack sizes. Oh yeah, that is pretty nice. So it didn't misplace them in a in a different bag than what is best. Yeah, it yeah. prioritizes basically the best stack size first. And, he even has and glint in the uh, regular resource bag, after. which is like the stuff that you yeah, get when you kill monsters in the world. Feature. Definitely, we we uh, you know. There's a lot of discussions about, you know, the, the spatial inventory and the different stack sizes and, you know, whether that Focus could cause like, confusion for players or, you know, extra stress on um, of sorting of inventory. And I was like, all right, well, no, ma no matter what we do, we got to try and make this uh, as easy and usable for our players as possible. And luckily, really smart people like Alex and Alec and our UI team, Colby, Colby in the game, Alex and Alec. Uh, that are helping us make um you know that the system that we want function really really nicely so uh, that's what that was one of those features um that, that came on that's like all right well i don't have to every single time i get something you know look and see what bags the best for it to be in um the uh oh, this is so uh, sick. The code can do it for us can't so. wait to play this game very cool I gotta say it's like maybe like oh, six months. Ready to head back now? I'm yeah, assuming six. Uh, oh, six ninety eight. Your, your, uh, the crit. Your uh, apprenticeship. Now. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, you know, let's talk a little. Those bit numbers about look good too. They look real good. Gathering is a bit different. Do like the numbers. Um, and one of the. I don't know how the surveying works about, quite yet, but we'll see. The world is obviously the number of different systems we have that change world state. We just saw a corrupt zone. Hold on, let's kill this dude. Oh. Is that the consecrating wave? Okay. It's a cleric move. Um, <clears throat> we just saw a corrupt zone, and um, that zone becomes corrupt after a period of time in which players are not addressing some issues that arise uh, through certain events or through, their, uh, through certain story arcs, and that corruption can spread, and corruption changes the spawners for resources and for monsters 
and that has a fundamental effect on the resource economy of the game. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It plays into you know scarcity. It gets players out in the world uh, searching for um, uh, different things that are predicated on on the dynamic parts of our world. Right? We can do stuff with day and night time. We can do stuff with seasons. Um, we can have things that are specifically related to some event or story arc or you know corruption, um, even uh, particular locations. Right? The, the regionality of a biome. Um, some. You know, frozen tundra place that's uh, completely covered in ice versus you know the the riverlands and um, uh, uh, the lushness there. So, um, don't want to just have that stuff uh, in and not be doing. There's a floating with it. box. So we're, we're trying oh to play on that for for gathering um, and open up um, the diversity of stuff that you can process and craft um, by finding those things. So, yeah, I love that. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned actually. A time of day and seasonality is being part of that world state change mm -hmm. um and as i understand whoops as i understand it we have a number of different oh let me see here and go over to um recipes so far it seems pretty um, basic but yeah, like don't we have to gather some it obviously the whole system is complex right but it's day? basic enough to understand the crafting system and that is absolutely magnificent that you can have a complex system that is very simple to understand uh you go out you get the thing that you need and then you bring it back and then sometimes it's there sometimes it's not there surveying helps you figure out where the thing is in the world and then um the environment itself, corrupted, non-corrupted, can also change those factors. So there are a lot of things that change to be able to get these things, and it makes it more difficult, but that means you as a player base, as a community, have to find these things, uh, help each other out, maybe extort each other for these things by uh, raising the price on certain items because people don't know how to get it because it only happens during a certain amount of time and the scarcity of that ri rises up the inflation and stuff like that so that would be really cool to have just like players interact with a very complex system that is very easy to understand i think intrepid has done an amazing job with that already yeah, I think they were. Those are the ones that we're talking about that are part of your Nightblade, right? Uh, the Moon Bells and the Night Opals. Uh, night Opals like do not reveal themselves um, during the daytime. Um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, and then the the Moon Bells are, are similar. Yeah, they they only bloom at night. So um, yeah, but we saw Moon Bells. You, if you're looking for those in particular, you so you could take, still uh, get the Moon Bell during the day, but they just shine at night. Cause we, cause we saw like earlier in the video that he, uh, he like walked over some moon bells that they were like an orange plant. We back. Another thing is, uh, the corrupted thing that was like flying in the air. Um, I forget what they call those. What were they? <sighs> what were they? Uh, I don't remember. Anyways. Keep an eye on the day, day night cycle and, um, you know, know where they're found, um, at the, in the world. And yeah, I do have some powers if we want to perhaps change it to nighttime that I could use. Shall we? Because it, it'll, it, yeah, it'll take good. a little while probably for us to get to nighttime. At least another hour yeah. or so. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Hold on. Stand by. Standing by. They edited it out. Oh my goodness. Nice. There we go. The dusk looked great. The moon looks fantastic. Look what the hell? You guys will probably notice. <laughs> that looks so uh, that cool. Nighttime is significantly darker than you guys last. It's saw actually perfect. Nighttime update. Um, we saw feedback from the community that bringing in the field of vision through the uh, through the lighting in the environment was something you guys wanted to see. Absolutely. And that's what we have adjusted a bit. Um, now, I'm excited because... This looks beautiful. I, have a certain I love nighttime. That I can, I think, update now, right? Is that his beard? Yes, you should be able to you upgrade your... Uh, got a weird-looking beard. To apprentice, is it windy? Which, um, is it blowing in the wind? Is that what's cool, happening? So we can craft one of those if you want. 
Um, we should make your, you know, chopping faster, help you find some rare stuff. Um, yeah. All right, let's see here. I'm going to accept. There we go. Ta -da. Got it. Yeah, so you, I think if you open your artisanship window, if you look at your lumberjacking, it should say that you're an apprentice, apprentice. now. Yeah. Nice. You, got, you got a nice little chunk of XP from that, too. That's yeah, nice. that was pretty good. Um, cool. So um, now that you've done that, uh, go. I think this anvil. You, yeah, this is the same anvil as the herbalism. See, see if you can craft a fast craft a, a tool there. What what uh what materials do you need? <clears throat> it says that I need um, zinc fragments and oak timber for novice lumberjacking. The apprentice requires zinc fragments with copper fragments and oak timber. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, that's all novice stuff. So um. So the way that the certification stuff breaks down is that um, every everyone gets to be a novice everything. So all, all 22 professions, the uh, players get to uh, be novice of. Um, and then it starts kind of like narrowing from there. So uh, after that, you'll only be able to be an apprentice of five things. Um, you can be a journeyman in four things. You can be a master in three things. And you can be a grand master in two things. Nice. So oh, wow. you'll, you'll need to narrow, but you can also sort of diversify to support you know, the professions that you want to first push further in. So Now, obviously, um, those, are, um, those restrictions are in place in order to create a dependency cross-player faction, right? For how players specialize their progression in the artisanship uh, trees. Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, being social is is uh, important to us, right? Like we we want players to interact with each other. We want the professions to make stuff for the other professions that uh, that are useful. You know, um, I um, influenced quite a bit by the Star Wars Galaxies style crafting, and you know, Ooh. just having people in your network that can you know supply the the uh, metal that you need to make your armor and the you know the the flowers that you need to to make your potions and you know maybe the potions that you need to make your enchantments uh, that, that to me was, was really interesting and part of the, Ooh, the broken gameplay moon. of the also economic looks gameplay of you know being being a good crafter being a good gatherer i've never that, um, played star wars system, galaxies but i've heard it, it, it only really good things about the crafting the, system um, the uh uh economic uh field of a particular server right um you, you can come in and be like i want to be the the, the potion mogul here right and like having good sources and you know having having a guild that uh, supports you uh, is just really really interesting and without um without sort of narrowing down what you have access to yourself um uh, it's sort uh, it takes away from from the ability to achieve that right so yeah so now, okay, we're going to be creating this, you said, apprentice tools. What do I need to do that? It said fragments, zinc fragments and um, I think copper fragments. Awesome. So the zinc fragments and copper fragments are going to be from the metalworking profession. And then the oak timber will be from the lumber milling profession. So since we're here, we can do the lumber milling. And this is the station that you need right next to us. So this is the debarker. This is one of the, the uh, few stations that uh, lumber milling has. Uh, is the, the debarker, the head saw, um, and I think the drying kiln, uh, okay. along with the refinery. So this is the the novice station, um, and I think this is an apprentice version here. Um, since we're at a service building that's built, um, the service buildings usually come stocked with some some uh, some better base stations, and then you can kind of um, progress them from there depending on how you you expand the buildings. But um, holy shit! So why don't you interact? This is with amazing, this and, by the way. Uh, yeah, I think this is the first time that we. Uh, I think having all these different stations, all these different things that you need to do to craft the like the one products that may be used in a different you know artisan skill like tree that like they might need the ingredients from lumber mills to do this uh for for like blacksmithing or something like that like i think that's really really cool and intricate and that makes crafters feel like their job is useful and that not everybody can do it especially since you're being limited by your uh profession and basically it makes every profession needed there's a meaning for every profession and stuff like that. And then you have to work together as a community, which has been missing from a lot of MMOs. So I think that's really cool. Once again, the only drawback to this type of game 
is it needs it needs players. I like this a lot. I hope a lot of people find it as interesting and as fun as I do so that there will be a lot of players playing and make this game fun because this game can be really, really fun done any processing. any processing yes absolutely yeah. now we, we alluded to it a little bit when we were showcasing the uh the freeholds uh but mm -hmm. this is everyone's first look at kind of how processing works and um, as you said we're looking to make some oak timber here um and as i've clicked on the oak timber to add fuel it says to the oak timber side talk to me mike a little bit about what fuel does for processing so fuel is the basic requirements on top of the resources that you need to craft a thing. So every processing station will require some kind of a fuel to automate the process <laughs> to make these process uh, resources. So a lot of processing. Of the resources or any type of resource or items could technically have a fuel value attached to them. And then each recipe will require some kind of a fuel value to uh, to be met to be able to process these things. So think of it as like if you're melting um, ore, you need to put uh, fuel to fire to melt the ore, right? So that right. kind of concept exists on all our processing stations. So when you click on it, uh, you should be able to put the oak wood or anything that you have gathered have to the oak in. wood. Yeah. So I've added so. one of the oak wood. And then yeah, I see so, I also have a number of different uh, um, herbalism resources here as well. Do those act as fuel potentially? Yeah, um, most of our resources will have some kind of a fuel value to it. And like I mentioned, like some items too. But okay. for, for this recipe, you'll only need one. Some other recipes might need 100 or 50, etc., etc. What the fuck? But the, the thing is, um, some, some items might be just um, catered towards being a fuel, right? So something like charcoal or something like coal, something like... Um, anything that is just designated as a fuel will just have a very um, efficient fuel value so you kind of want to save that for higher recipes or something simple like this one you can pretty much use anything that's common or or, or lower or degrade or sorry the, the tier one items uh to be in the fuel okay so i've so i've added in the wood for the fuel and now it's it has my fuel has been selected and I can start the job. It says that the duration is one minute. Now I'm noticing at the top of the processing station that we have uh, three available slots. Is that a queue that players can use? Um, and is it shared? Is it for just themselves? Talk to me a little for, bit about that. For Node, it's personal. So we didn't want to congest like only three spots for every single person that knows well, that'd be awful. that would have been pretty bad um so it's the, the queue system is only for yourself but um something personal like freeholds um would be uh, station based so if five people wanted to use one one station at the freehold you have to wait in line and then that kind of comes into Ooh. the family system we talked about on the freehold live stream where you want to have uh, limited access to whoever is viable for the fuels or for the stations. Um, but for <laughs> any service buildings in the node, um, it's all personal, so you can queue up as much as you want, and then someone else can just come by and use the same station and then queue up for their station. Nice. That's but awesome. And additionally, it will also be influenced by nodes. So, like right now, you see three, but it could be five. It could be two simultaneous jobs, etc. Based how your node grows. Got it. So nice. there are specializations that the processor can take uh, if the node should elect to do so. And citizens participate in that upgrade that would increase that size, or perhaps even the efficiency of the processing jobs as well, both speed, uh, quantity of receipt, any rarity procs, anything, all of those play a role in upgrade potential uh, that the node might choose to specialize in. Right, but um, no. just like we discussed in uh, free live stream as well, the node um, processing only goes up to journeyman. So if you want to do the highest tier of uh, processing, you, you probably want to seek out the freehold uh, owners, basically. <laughs> Uh oh did I? I i might be full hold on i can't claim it yet i need to oh i need to your back space is full <laughs> who needs this this cheap glint here okay. Actually, I, let, me, let me move that down i didn't need to delete that Whoops. 
Um, okay. One, uh, are you just throwing money away? That's how rich you are. Pretty much. Um, additional <laughs> thing I would like to add for processing, uh, as you can say, right. Steve, you could you could cancel the job um, also. So like, let's say you accidentally schedule the wrong one. And the only thing that gets consumed is the fuel. So fuel is basically a sink for this job. Got it. Okay. Okay, so fuel's always sunk regardless of if you cancel the job or not. Yep. Yeah, another uh, another thing as well is that um, uh, when you're when you're choosing the job, you know, you'll see kind of on the on the right hand side that we have something called job size. Oops. And right now, uh, right now there's only the ability to make a one job size, but um, uh, this in the same vein of um, you know this be having like more jobs that you can queue and like you know better stats that make the, them go faster or proc extra resources. Uh, job size is another thing that we could do, right? Um, so you, you probably don't want to use three entire slots just to make you know three pieces of oak wood. But if you had a job size that you know was twenty, um, you'd be able to uh, make all twenty of those with the with the one job size. So oh nice. So it's a little different than what people are used to with you know I I'm making exactly you know seventeen pieces of, uh, of oak timber. You might need to what does that say? you know do a job size of five plus one, one if you need specifically one six so minute okay um, that's awesome yeah so those we, are, we those uh, are also influenced by customization options that the node can participate <laughs> in uh as well and perhaps policies and or relics like all those things are an intricate web of boons benefits and downsides that apply to these different game functions god exactly. this world looks so much better Very than cool. Love it. the first alpha right, so we've we'll made see. some timber <clears throat> gotcha yeah let's head let's head down to uh the smithy over here there should be a crushing station. You can crush up the the uh, copper and zinc that you got into fragments, and then we should have what we need to make you a new pickaxe or um, axe. Um, yeah, so this is the crushing crushing station right here. Nice. nice. All right. <clears throat> all right. It's really nice of you to have built all of these uh, artisanship service buildings. Look at look at all these jobs that you're creating. This I guy know. stays here. He gets to hang out all night. Russian rocks, I doing stuff. That is awesome. Yeah, great for the economy. Really, really great mayorship uh, decisions. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. That's why I'm, I'm a term after term mayor. Just no term limits at all. It's the way we like it here, <laughs> right? My yes. my personal investments have somehow miraculously just had the greatest returns of any citizen of the mayor. <laughs> Agreed. I think there's only other been one other mayor that was Alec. <laughs> And I haven't seen him for a really long time. That's so. right. That is right. <laughs> <Damn. Poor Alec. laughs> His family members actually came by. I'm looking for him too. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I need to make copper fragments and zinc fragments. Yeah. So I'm gonna kick off. I'm gonna add some fuel here. Um, oh, okay, cool. That's cool. Put this, and I'll kick that job off, and then I'll use the zinc. Oh my God. You see the NPC working real hard. Yeah, I thought it was a cat. Like He's a go-getter. I didn't even start the mm -hmm. other job yet. He just immediately went to work. He needs a raise. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> cool. Okay. That's yeah. cool. And uh, just a just a comment too on the on, on that right. Like um, we're trying to sort of marry the the visuals with what's actually going on at the station, right? So if you have a job queued um, and you're trying to you know do errands throughout the node or in your freehold or whatever, right? Like should be able to look at the station and know what's going on with it so oh that's you know, cool he's there working and you know I love he's it. done he's gonna stop and you can be like okay you know there's do there's other people see him to, to pick up and have some visuals associated with that so uh, as much as we can have stuff you know rooted in world instead of you know throw a bunch of ui in the player's face uh that's that's something that we're trying to I don't do think other players can see it to us i think only he can cool yeah, and to add to that, it's uh, personal, right? So it's only like other people won't see you doing yep. your uh, processing. Got it. Yeah, in, in nodes, right? The free the freehold ones would be uh, since they are relevant to any of the people that have access to it. You'd you'd be able to see that a that a job is going right. This guy is a is a, is a dedicated worker. He's pumping. Yeah. Definitely. Look at that form. So now, just to remind he, folks, obviously, when we talk about um, processing as one branch of the artisanship tree, even though you have access to all branches throughout the world up to some level of degree, processing, best processing, is done on freeholds. And the best crafting is done in nodes, right? When we talk about workstation availability. 
but there is some overlap there, as those of you will remember from our Freehold uh, 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 live stream. Um, you do have up to a certain point to progress available to you for both gathering, processing, and crafting nice. uh, without needing necessarily a freehold. Yeah, exactly. So, um, oh, go ahead, Mike. up to uh, journeyman, you'll be uh, um, journeyman's uh, type of gathering, crafting, and processing should be available pretty much everywhere. Um, and then this the spe specialization really kicks in at the master and above. Awesome. All right, I have, I believe, <clears throat> acquired now. Oh, nice. Some fragments. Hang on. Well, let's, awesome. uh, let's head back up to the crafting session um, next to good old Wo Woody Gungan and uh, make yourself an apprentice axe. And I think we should be able to chop that corrupted tree down. Yeah, that's right. It's all for a sword, and by the way. Also, now that it's night, while we're out there, you <clears> guys can grab perhaps some of the. Um... This is all for a singular sword. Uh, the night opal. Yeah, I think Mike has high enough mining to get the mine opal, night opal. Um, and then I think I think new moon bells are novice, so you should have access to those. Yep. Yep. All right, so I'll grab the moon bells. Perfect. All right, I'm crafting my new apprentice lumberjacking axe. Ta da! It is equipped. Nice. Let me see. Cool. Ah, very cool. Sweet. It's there. There it is. How fast is it? It's 30, 30. lumberjacking speed. Oh, nice. I think the other one was like only five, so it should be yeah, fast. When we get out there, we should race. See if you can drop the tree down faster than me. All right, let's do it. I'm ready. Let's All right. go. Um, Perfect. I actually really the lighting is actually amazing. I, I think it was. Yeah, a, it's looking it was really a good. Call from the community to to tune this a bit more on the darker side. Oh, shooting star! Do you see that? Make a wish. Oh, that's look beautiful. The moon. Yeah, I did. I did look at the moon. It's looking pretty oh. nice. Pretty nice. Pretty nice light. indeed. I like the uh, the harbinger moon. We'll see. Is the moon getting moon. closer? Is it no. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Don't say that. Day one. That's not what we want to hear. <laughs> Kill Three the days remaining. <laughs> so, do it. Corey, tell me a little bit like when we. Right now we're in this night phase. Oh, I love the fireflies too. Noah did a great job on these. Nice. Yeah, Noah, Noah is next level. We Very love Noah. Cool. Noah, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, obviously, moving to night now is going to give us access to these moon bells and these night opals. Um, but when things like the world state change, whether it be corruption related or time of day, it's not just an introduction of rare materials, it also oh. is a removal of some other materials as well, potentially. So it's a, it is a, um, and some world state changes like we talked about with corruption, if not addressed, can significantly alter the flow of resources across the world in such a way that creates a bit of turbulence in the world market and economy. Hmm. And that's what we're trying to achieve with these world state changes. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> you can see, yep. um... Uh, out in the open, the night opals lit up. Those little blue lights all yep. over the place. That wasn't there before. Yeah. yeah, you can see mundos as well by the trees. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, so you should be able to grab those. That's awesome. Those were just yeah. kind of just basic little rocks. Yeah, so that's like a, you know, we, we, th we thought those were all opals, and they were opals during the day, but uh, at night, um, you know, some of them are actually night opals, so. Nice. Um, pretty cool. Oh, look. Leveled up again. Oh, I leveled up. crushing it. My herbalism. <laughs> herbalism god. Now we get the moon bells. Herbalism god. <clears throat> yeah, these oh. moon bells didn't exist before, too. We're at the same spot. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Oh, my yeah. god. I thought I saw them. Oh, no. The wolf. Give me a little uh... Protect him. Nice. Mike, no. I'm like max level, so oh. I'm just slaughtering these people. <laughs> <laughs> can you pet the dog, Steven? No, but I can shoot it with an arrow in the face. Oh. If you kick oh, like, it faster than me. Wait, let's <laughs> chop the trees down together. That's right here, Steven. Right here. Right, where you at? Where you at? Right here. All right, I'll start. All right. Wait, no, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, three, three, two, two, one, go. Wait, no, we messed up. We messed up. We messed up. We can do this. We can do this. How many people does it take to chop down a tree? Okay, 
Careful. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. You way ready? faster. I have no clue. Two, three. Oh! What? You just got um, wrecked. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> just got wrecked. This is where PVP starts. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Give me the longer. Word. So the person with the careful. faster chopping spe uh, speed that, uh, will uh, corrupt a tree. get the materials, oh, yeah. they'll get the resources. That's why we're here, huh? There we go. Huh. Uh, this, this place Holy balls. So good at night. It's creepy. Oh, man. Look at that dude. The, the spooky dude again. He's just chilling up there. Yeah, he's eyeing us. He he's waiting for the next challenger. Will we approach oh, him? Brother. Stay away from that guy. Nope. <laughs> yeah. It looks like one shot city up there. Yeah, it does. Get these uh, blood boiled spirit things. Yeah. I can tell you the lore behind that, or. <laughs> um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> ah, dang it. Right, yeah, I got some of those. I got this thing. Okay. Come on, man. Nice little corrupted tree. Oh, bam. Tree explosion. What do you think, Mike? You want to take on this ancient minion over here? No, no, I, th I think we need to no, nerf Steven something to time. That sure. was like less than two seconds. Yeah, that was really. Yeah. I was like in there and out of there. Well, maybe a little I'll balancing pass necessary. Take that note down, Mike. <laughs> nerf have right. incoming. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Way to go, Steven. Already nerfing Lumberjack. I know. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, let's. So now we do we have all the materials we need? Did you guys get the night opals? Yeah, I got some. All right, sweet. I can trade you back in town. Let's do it. Hold on, let's get rid of this guy. Very good. My goodness. Ow. Oh, that was unfortunate. Animal abuse. Beat up. <laughs> <laughs> so now, talk to me a little bit about the sword that we're going to be crafting. Um, Dude, this all looks amazing. Obviously, itemization in Ashes. Music seems a little different too, huh? It's not restricted um, based on class, right? So anybody can wear kind of anything, whatever is most beneficial towards their particular strategy and class kit and, and build. Nice. Um, but how do we influence that from a crafting perspective? So the recipe that you learn is somewhat of a unique sword uh, we want to introduce as uh, mid-level maybe a little bit high but generally for itemization purposes we want to have a viable option for every build that players want to try i know that's I a bold statement Steven knows where his uh, city is yeah uh, it's like, a where, where, uh, where, are we going? <laughs> where are we going uh, we have a mini map top right guys come on is this way i Here. always get lost out here when i take my nightly strolls <laughs> just run over to the south. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, Mike. To, to your left. <laughs> to the left. Got it. To your left. Okay. Um. I was like, is he gonna go to a freehold or something? <laughs> I was saying that uh, we want to support every kind of build that the player wants to try out, and I know that's a bold statement, but that is something that we're gonna attempt. Uh, which means wow. uh, a lot of crafting recipes will need to support variable stats, variable playstyles, and for for this weapon, for particular it was um somewhat it of is a, gonna get calm sword because it's a sword that has magic, magic penetration so something that mages maybe might, might be able to Good use luck. or um clerics um i will be here to help you go to the crafter crafting oh, station right here, here. Right here. All right. then you should give them the you oh the right you need my right. night opal yeah. right uh yeah. i can trade you done Okay, we got some night opals. Sweet. Something trained. Alright. Boom! We got some night opal. Let's do this. Easy. All right. yeah, so, <clears throat> so now I see I have my learned recipe. The night blade is under weapons category. Uncommon. It's okay, a green blade. That's cool. Yeah, I'm um, not sure we touched on this on different live streams, but uh, our crafting menus will have some required materials. So those are the things that you must have at that certain rarity. So we have the Knight of Opal and the Moonbell that's required. And then we have the selectable section where you can put different uh, rarity amounts. Um, you want to do the uh, the zinc one first, Steven. So okay. it has a lot of there. And then zinc one. And then now you can see that the... 
item itself was uncommon, and then if you add the fragments in. Oh, then, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. The I so the uncommon night blade is here. Mm -hmm. That's but the default. By adding in these legendary zinc fragments. Okay. If you summon it, now it turns rare. Oh. Okay. Cool. And now you can see there's additional properties onto the item. Uh, certain things change. And then if you put the oak timber, also at legendary. Also legendary oak. Okay, got it. And then now becomes it heroic. Whoa. Of it, and then it's um, okay, so these cool. are the things that we kind of want to explore on the crafting side, where we okay. introduce maybe a new stat line or a so like maybe you only need stats at certain uh, tiers, certain and when you items craft these items crafted. using better materials, the you use better materials the item increases. increases. Oh. Um, for, demonstration purposes we're using legendary but um basically when you use a higher tier than the recipe is intended for so we could technically build this item with common oak right. timber then zinc fragments then that would produce an uncommon item but since we're showcasing this at legendary tier um you can move up the tiers and in, uh cool. have the stats increase that's awesome and i'm so gonna be a broke obviously bitch, dude. there's gonna be a number of different types of selectables that you can incorporate as part of the crafting process each of them having unique results as part of the stat block for the weapon, but also increasing the quality predicated on the quality of the selectable that you're contributing. Right, that would be our sub recipe system that we'll kind of highly touch up on. Uh, so um, a common copper sword might have sub recipes that changes the stat block completely, which would be, um, let's say, a brutal copper sword, which um, specializes in crit damage. But that would be changing the selectable items it's from oak timber to ash timber, for example, right? Yeah. Um, and then when it's on the selectable level, we can choose the, the rarity of those resources to increase the rarity of the item produced. Awesome. And each time you're kind of unlocking a different result with, re with regards to that particular recipe, you're mm -hmm. learning that interaction between the selectable materials and the output that comes from it. So learning one recipe actually learns you a multitude of different potential um, uh, 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 rewards from that one particular recipe. Yeah, um, we have uh, something crafting, unique. Sorry, yeah, uh, something unique in our crafting system where we want to have recipe XP of some sort, and then those sub recipes could be earned by um, leveling up your recipe, which means that you have to craft a night blade multiple times mm -hmm. to level it up to have a better result. Uh, so the sub recipe could be from a vendor recipe or world drops, like we said earlier. Um, but the idea is one type of item can have potential to be multiple different outcomes. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and craft this weapon. That's sick. We've done it. We've received a night blade. Of the is legendary oh or heroic God, nature. We made it through the entire <laughs> loop. Let me see is foretold. I know. Let's see. Let's take a look at what we have in our inventory here. So I see we have a heroic night blade that's doing some physical damage and magical penetration with some magical damage as well. Interesting. And if I compare that currently to my longbow, obviously we have some comparable version there. But let me go ahead and equip this. Holy sh! Ooh, that looks good. What the hell? That looks you're awesome. Styling. You're styling. You are styling. You put in the work, and now you're styling. Oh, I love it. That looks. That's super crazy. Cool. Sweet. It's gotta look different. Very nice. At each stage, right? See of the night blade for the fam yeah i gotta i gotta i gotta get the right perspective here hold on stand by ladies and gentlemen we have crafted pretty dope. world first on the night blade we have done it yeah. <laughs> very cool so guys we just walked through from start to finish crafting one particular recipe of of course of many as itemization is a very key component of of player progression within the within the world of vera um and as you can see from gathering to processing 
to crafting, um, this is the type of experience and the unique aspects uh, of that process that is uh, within Ashes of Creation. We do these demonstrations so that you guys get an early look during development on the direction of this particular core loop, this core system to Ashes, um, and we want your feedback on it. What did you think about the gathering, the processing, the stations, those, the times that it takes, the queue system for it, um, the unique interactions with the recipes, the progression of the recipes, um, uh, the tool dependencies, and the, the skill tree that you saw, um, the unique world state that influences the economy and the ability of, of players to accumulate these resources and move them across the world. We're fresh off of a caravan stream as well, where you kind of see uh, how those materials, those resources, that wealth gets accrued and trans transited across the world. Um, so all of these things are things we want you to opine on in our YouTube, uh, on the forums, on different social medias. Talk to us about what you saw today uh, and how you feel about it, where do you think that it could be improved, um, and how it relates to your previous experiences and other MMOs that you've played and what you've enjoyed about them. Um, but otherwise, Mike, Corey, Nathan, Alex, thank you guys for joining me. I know the audience obviously appreciates all the hard work that you guys put in, that everybody on the team puts in, um, and this is a very big group effort, obviously, to get these types of systems up and running. Um, I know I appreciate it. The audience does, too. Thank you for joining us and chatting with us a little bit about um, how all this stuff works. And everyone, I will see you guys back on stream in just a moment. All right. So, thank you all. overall, amazing. Amazing artisan uh, artisan system. Um, the only concern I really have is they said something about like skills only. They need like the certification to upgrade. I'm wondering if somebody say chops down trees for like hours upon hours and doesn't get the certification, does the skill keep increasing? But they just don't have the the like apprenticeship certification or whatever. Basically, what I'm asking is if somebody already has all of their professions done or, or picked per se, they have like their apprentice, journeyman, adept, or whatever master professions picked, and they say none of those were like herbalism and they were doing a bunch of herbalism outside in the world does the level cap stay at 10 until they get their certification or can it keep increasing obviously the xp needed from like apprentice to journeyman or whatever is going to be probably exponentially higher and the only way to get that experience is if you're getting like a ton of materials but say somebody just has been grinding the hell out of herbalism for days upon days. And they're like, you know what? I don't really want to be a lumberjack anymore. I want to switch over to herbalism because I found that to be more appealing. If they drop all their certifications in lumberjacking, can they just um, use... Can they upgrade their herbalism and does it keep that extra XP after they had um, already gathered all that much or does it just strictly stop at 10 and you are only a level 10 herbalist and switching your profession uh, is really, really bad because of that. That's that's kind of what I'm asking. Um. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. I'm just wondering um, how that how that interacts when somebody wants to switch their professions and their their XP gained from doing said resource gathering. Obviously, it's going to be pretty hard. It's going to be to like get max level without you know being able to get certain resources out in the world, if not impossible. And I would understand that, but it wasn't really well explained in the video. Uh, other than that. Um, game looks great. Uh, the abilities of the ranger weren't really leaked. Uh, like we can kind of see like the the diagram of it. But so far, I'm really excited for the ranger leaks or the ranger 
uh, showcase uh, next month because that's one of the classes I'm considering. The corruption looks amazing. Uh, obviously, we're only seeing things from Winstead's point of view, but when you start scaling it out into the world of like other places, it makes me really, really excited. It really makes me excited for the potential the potentiality of this game. It is trying to tackle so much, especially the gearing, um, how making better gear just takes those like little resources and it took them about an hour to make this one sword. I think that's a valuable, like, I think that's nothing to scoff at and time wise, but obviously they were like demonstrating. They weren't just getting the materials. It could have probably gotten shortened down to like maybe a half hour. They also had to wait for a specific time of day to get some of these uh, items and stuff. I think it's an appropriate amount of time to get the gearing that you need. And I, you can always expedite it by buying things and um, using the economy that way by buying said stuff instead of having a group of people together that, you know, one was doing like the stone mason or the, the, the mining for the opal um, for the sword. So that's pretty cool. I also want to know if the heroic version of that night blade looks different than the uncommon version or if it looks different uh with different materials on it like does the glow change uh for example like the the base artifact or the base item can say the same but does the glow change based on the level it is that would be cool um i don't know uh there's there's like little little things like that i guess um that i'm wondering but other than that I really like it. Um, they mentioned gearing. You can gear whatever you want uh, as long as it has the stats that you're requiring. And that's going to be ambitious and it's going to be a balanced nightmare, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, in, in my experience, like I said earlier on, uh, before we even got to that point, I think playing around with a lot of broken stuff can be a lot of fun. And it will be really aggravating to people that do not do their homework and play consistently. And I think that's fine, in my opinion. Um, it may be a deterrent. It may uh, be fun for some people. It may just be like, uh, why the hell does this exist in the game? And you're like, well, you can build this to, you know, build that or to build against that. Or your character just wants to go a certain route and that's fine too i i think there's i think the amount of diversity that they're trying to implement into the game outweighs any balance i think if you just have enough diversity balance becomes null right you don't need to balance if you just have a ton of shit that you can like play around with and i think that's the goal and if that's the goal then that's awesome um of course people are gonna say this build is so broken you must build this meta build on ranger archetypes and that i say that's just a content farm for youtubers and this game probably will not have a real meta for a very very long time and that's exciting i think that's what's most exciting about ashes is that even though you get these like YouTube videos that are like content farming for like, this is the most meta build or whatever, you could probably build a lot of shit and it'd be really cool uh, in this game. I feel like crafting in ashes also was a step above uh, pack stays. Like, now that I've played Pax Day for a long time and they had the different materials and stuff like that and you can build and like craft like your buildings and stuff, I think gear wise, it's similar. It's more simplified in Ashes, but also more complex uh, with the amount of different systems, different items and stuff like that. Um, I think 
Ashes this time did crafting better than what Pax Day did because you are able to queue times things. Uh, there may be only limited slots. They thought about that. Uh, that's cool. That gives you a reason to keep coming back to your local node to, you know, come come check on your like your processing, your crafting and stuff like that. The, but the queue time doesn't stop you from playing. And that's the biggest thing that I noticed that was wrong in PAX Day. And I think that's probably the best option that Ashes could have done. Um, and it also kind of limits the amount of things that can be built without putting time and effort into something. And I think I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, I think, I think overall, I don't really have any complaints about, uh, about the artisanship tree. I'm not going to be an artisan by any means, but I'm sure there are a lot of artisans that are very happy with the amount of choices, the amount of resources, the amount of stuff that they can do. Uh, the really difficult part, I think for, um, is like, if I become like a PVPer. I'm going to need a lot of gold. And how do I get a lot of gold if I am uh, just out in the world a lot? And the only thing I can think of is gathering resources while I'm out there and bringing them back. But I can only be a master in two uh, gathering professions, you know? And getting this gear may prove difficult for people that don't want to interact with the system at all and it may prove difficult for people that um which which i guess is fine right like if you're not going to interact with all the systems um then you're gonna be at a disadvantage but also it stops it makes people do stuff that um they may not want unless you can get like gold from like glint if like glint is like an insane money source for you to like trade glint for for like gold that's cool too uh because if you can do that then that's another way to earn money so that you can buy these uh process items or the full gear items that people have already created so i think um as long as there's ways for people outside of the artisanship uh like zone and they just want to be like out in the world and doing stuff as long as they can make money doing those things then good good everything is good um yeah it's the only thing i can think of the we've covered it q times gearing arsonship progression uh the leveling up of items we haven't even gotten to enchanting yet. Enchanting could be another thing that can level up those items to the next level. We've talked about visual clarity on these weapon upgrades. We've talked about um, the simplicity of a complex system. Yeah, I think Ashes is checking all the boxes. And every time I watch a new dev, dev update, I get more and more excited for Alpha 2. Can't wait for December. Because I would love, love, love know when i get to play this game uh i am gonna go back to this twitch clip and we're gonna watch like their q a and stuff um we're not even midnight yet Hold on. okay so we're getting we're getting pretty close to the q a and whatnot and um i'll be right back as there is something i need to grab from my door cool 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 Christmas is coming up. Had some Amazon packages by my door. All right, let's finish finish the last the, the, the rest of the live stream. Woohoo! We hope that you all enjoyed that. Lucy did. She was watching with bated breath for every <laughs> single moment, weren't you, Lucy? Lucy, um, Lucy's ready to get out there and craft. Are you ready to craft? Do you want your own sword? She thinks she does. Um, but of course we do have some questions that we noticed from chat. Uh, our wonderful community managers have been pulling those in, but while we answer those, I will have the video up just kind of like playing in the background. So you can kind of relive 
all the crafting goodness. The glory. For the first couple are more reiterations because we did answer these questions in the stream, but I think that it wasn't clear because people have been keep asking it post that. So the first sure. one was how many people can use the crafting stations at once and is there a queue to use them? Um, so as it stands now, crafting stations and processing stations that exist within nodes are unique to the player. So meaning you can, there is no limitation on who and how many people can use a crafting station within a node. Right. That's different on a freehold. Freehold, it shares the queue. So if you have family members that are wanting to use the processing stations on your freehold, uh, those queues are limited uh, on a per job basis, right? Whereas in nodes, because they don't go to the highest tier possible of crafting, excuse me, of processing, um, uh, those get those get are, are personalized. So you saw when I was when I was doing a number of different processing actions, they I had my own little queue section up above where I could have uh, three jobs running at. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now upgrades to in the node can change those things. Um, so as the um, as the service building that's offering the processing or the crafting, um, <clears throat> it has upgrades. There are policies that exist. Um, there are certain relics that you can acquire, um, all of which change the dials a bit on uh, processing yield, processing time, um, processing um, uh, uh, job size. Like those things can get adjusted, and that helps players determine where do I want to go to do the things I need to do? Which node should I use? It is it is important to understand how that node has specialized because you only have a limited amount of specializations you can do with the service building plots, the policies enacted, um, and the upgrades chosen. Can you provide more details in regards to the design philosophy behind why you it's a queue system for freeholds but not for uh, nodes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's just because the of hold, they're the they're the best thing that you can get. Can achieve the highest levels of processing. That's where the highest levels of processing occur. Nodes can only go up to a certain level of processing. Um, now, <clears throat> we want to be able to throttle the amount of resources that can be processed at any given time in response to the fluctuation and flows of the economy. Right. So we want to make sure that the economy is kind of a bigger ship when turning than being able to immediately start processing everything at once and, and get new resources out as the flow of supply and demand changes within the world. Um, <clears throat> and because, again, that's, that's at the highest levels of processing and you're sharing uh, um, the available queues uh, that exist at those stations, it's going to take time, and it's going to take a long time for the higher level materials. All right. I'm okay with this. So here is a lot of people won't be. Of a commentary in regards to, there's been some mixed conversation in regards to this, and I think in the past we've also done a whole uh, feedback thread and report on this topic specifically, but why did you go with a spatial inventory system for resources? Air vans. Sure, yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um <clears throat> So obviously there's a number of different methods that we can use uh, in an effort to mitigate or again, throttle um, the amount of success that players can have in any one trip out in the world. Right now we're using a combination of three things. We are using um, progression gating through your profession level, right? So you need to have a certain level to access certain resources. Um, we are utilizing the spatial inventory space as um, <clears throat> a limitation on how much things you can gather before you need to go back to town. Um, and then lastly, we have <clears throat> a tool predicate where you need to have a tool that is relevant for the resource you're gathering, and those tools have a, a decay value after each use. Um, Weight is obviously an approach that we could take uh, if we wanted to limit. However, the spatial system works in concert with a, no a number of other types of systems. For example, we want to have itemization drop on death, specifically as it relates to material items. Um, and <clears throat> we want there to be an additional layer above just weight that introduces complexity 
And where there is complexity, there is choice and there is strategy and there is planning required on behalf of the player in order to um, set themselves up for the best possible success in certain situations, right? And so situationally, it's unique which bag type you choose. This also gives us a unique progression realm within bags themselves so that bags are catered towards a specific quote unquote weight class. And that is augmented by the spatial component, right? So as you introduce not just the weight aspect that you would normally see through stack size, but you also have the grid formation of the spatial aspect um, to, to again, make it a relevant choice when you're leaving town, which bags I'm going to have equipped. And we want to have a deep progression in bag choice as well, because it not only interfaces with the resource gathering, but also the PVP aspect of things. And players can cater themselves towards one of those directions. Yep. So, you know, with a broader appeal that the game design provides through having these multiple progression loops that are somewhat disparate in interest, some being PVP, some being PVE, some being crafting oriented, um, this all provides a, a matrix of decision making on behalf. I have a question. If I had general bags, um, not like rock bags or whatever, but like say I'm like pretty high level and I have a bunch of spaces in my like resource bag that are just general, you can put any resource inside of them. They may only stack like 10 rocks instead of 30 rocks. But if I reach that stack of 10 rocks and I get another of the exact same type, would it put um, just like another copy of that next to the original one? So say I pick up 19 rocks, would I have a stack of 10 and then a stack of 9? Or would I only be able to keep that stack of 10? Because if it adds on another stack of 9, I'm okay with it. And then uh, general resource bags, like, uh, I guess in D&D, it's kind of like the, the magical bag of holding. How many of, how many of those can I have? Uh, how many bags can I have and how much space will it allow at that, like, at like the highest tier? And same thing goes for like other resource bags. Uh, like how many spaces are like min, max and all that stuff. I guess that's the stuff that we really need to balance around and think about in the system but um yeah i don't i as long as it adds like the 10 stack and then the nine stack i'm okay with it if it only allows you to have the 10 stack then i'm not okay with it half of the player but i doubt I they would do that yields a compelling gameplay loop um and so that's why we're going to do it now it's important to note once again this is alpha, which means that these concepts that live, you know, up here and get down into paper, then get down into into implementation, there is still an iteration phase that exists after the implementation. And so when we get into alpha two and when we test these things, we are going to fine tune them and sometimes they might be completely changed. That's just the nature of an iterative process. And so uh, we need to understand right now, um, while you're seeing this in action, it's going to be different when players are hands-on. And we'll be collecting all that information, all those logs. We'll be querying how players interface with these different systems. And we'll also be, very importantly, the next step, collecting feedback directly from the players about these types of systems and whether or not they hit the mark and how they need to be fine-tuned in order to do so or wholesalely replaced. Um, so I would say, as players are participating in Alpha 2, get a feel for... Uh -oh. Oh, uh, we lost Steven. Can we see you? Systems and provide the feedback, and we'll see how. Did we do? Can you hear me? You're good now. You froze for us oh. for a moment. I was like, My oh bad. no. <laughs> My bad. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where I left off there, but that's. that's Basically, uh... you were asking for feedback. Definitely share yes, feedback. Exactly. Uh, we actually have a form thread already up, so please do so. I'll remind you guys at the end as well. But, um, yeah, good. There cool. were some kind of tangential questions in regards to what you were just talking about. Uh, specifically sure. because people were wondering um, about crafting bags and different types of bags and can like crafters create those bags mm -hmm. yes. um, and 
you know, the obvious answer is obvious. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. That, 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 is a, that is a wholesale crafting uh, area. <laughs> so yes. the next one here is in regards to alt characters. How do we feel about people? Because we provided some uh, details in regards to how many uh, professions you can and processing prof classes and things of that sort that you can mm -hmm. personally be on per character yep. basis. What if I create alts that have those so that I can cover all of it? Is that something that we're okay with as a company or how? Yeah, I'd be okay yeah, with that. I, th I, th I think so. I mean, <clears throat> look, this is, you know, this is entirely a subjective viewpoint, of course, but, but in my opinion, um, if you're putting in the time and effort, effort to necessary do necessary to progress a character to the point where you have access to those types of things um, <clears throat> is parallel with the effort it takes for your main character to do those things, um, then that's a choice that you're making and you're splitting your game time efforts towards two different characters. And presumably so, that's a bit of an asymmetric balance point uh, that gets provided. Uh, I think that's fine. Um, and I think that, you know, when we design the game, we design with that in mind as well. And that's why we have certain restrictions on the number of grandmaster professions that one particular character can do. Now, when we want to extend those restrictions out from a character basis to an account basis, we do so. And we do so particularly with housing. That's an additional level of, of limitation that's going to mitigate some of the alt atmosphere for, let's say, owning a freehold, right? Um, that is something that that we place as a restriction nice. because we feel that um, the limited re real reality space that exists within the world is something we don't want to extend to the alt uh, uh, atmosphere. And so in that situation, a player might have to, you know, get another account or something or, or do some obfuscation there. But from the perspective of progressing within the crafting professions and within the processing and gathering professions, that's acceptable in my opinion. Um, and then the next one here is, uh, will gathering and its noises increase the range the monsters will notice you? So if you Ooh. are being so stealthy and you're harvesting things and chopping down wood, are creatures going to like perceive that? That's an interesting sure. question. That that um, There has been some discussion about that in the past. Um, we have not yet gotten to the types of unique perception behaviors that we want NPCs to have. Right now, they're relatively rudimentary in their perception, although it is what players would come to expect in the majority of MMOs they've already played. <clears throat> but An aggro range. We're aiming a bit higher, um, and we haven't gotten to that work yet. But we are talking about things like unique abilities <clears throat> excuse me, played by characters that extend the perception radius. Um, or uh, sounds and different types of walking that are angular from the from the um, from the mob's perception perspective uh, to be unique. Uh, different types of creatures that might be uh, three dimensional in space, whether it is in water or birds in the sky, that have a downward cone angle type perception mm. as well. Like those, <laughs> those are things we want to do, but we haven't yet um, spent the time on the AI. AI, AI. Interesting. And then the next one here is in regards to artisan gear and will it be a viable thing for me to utilize in combat? So if I'm crafting and someone asks me to help them with something, can I just leave my artisan gear on and go go out and fight or will I need to be swapping so, my armor? So you will not need to swap your armor. Artisanship gear lives in alongside your adventuring gear um, and there will be a toggle that you can use to show visibility one or the other's visuals now that <clears throat> doesn't mean you need to swap the gears it means that if you want to be seen as wearing the herbalist's outfit uh you can you're still going to have your adventuring gear present and on the character and benefiting from the stats that are conferred by them and vice versa for <clears throat> for the uh um, for the gathering gear or the artisanship it's like another cosmetic um, but it's in-game created. There is in regards to upgrading items. So if I create an item at a low quality, will I later be able to upgrade that item when I have the resources yeah. to do so? Yeah, we, we want to be careful. You know, <clears throat> so right now, as you saw in the stream, the contribution of materials to crafting an item results in advancing the rarity of that item. 
Um, now that doesn't exclude players who don't have the legendary uh, or the higher quality contributed resources from progressing their common item up the rarity tree through enchantments such as uh, scroll enchanting or through tempering the gear. Um, both of those can affect the quality and the rarity of the gear that you produce, but by contributing the resources during the crafting process, you are getting a head start with the higher quality item and now are less dependent on those other avenues to achieve that, which might be, uh, again, a different vertical space of progression that you don't have as good of access to, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of distributing that approach. Okay. Uh, and then this is probably one I noticed. I don't think I really understood that. Uh, long-term uh, fans who have been with us and on this journey for a really long time, they are curious about what happened to the more manual crafting side of crafting. Because we didn't that showcase is, yeah. that here. We showed who, mostly who is that? fast crafting. Who is a, who's a long-time a lot of people. <laughs> oh, 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 a lot, oh. Of, a lot of people. A lot I thought you said there's ask. one person. I, I thought I heard no. you say, like, we have a long time person who's been asking. I was like, oh my God, no, who's no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I, meant, I meant generally, I, I noticed this question from Got people it. who are yes. our fans for a long time, not for sure, uh, for new sure. people. <laughs> so that is still a work in progress. Um, and, okay. you know, we want to be careful. I'd be here when all day if showcase... I listed all the names. <laughs> yeah, no, fair, fair, fair. Um, we want to be careful that when we. Um, when we list, excuse me, when we showcase certain systems that we're doing so in a way that's digestible, obviously, and allows for people to provide feedback, <clears throat> but not all systems come online as fast as we want them to. Um, that particular gameplay layer is still a work in progress, um, and you will likely be getting an update on it at some point in the future when we're ready to showcase it, but it is still intended. The question that's outstanding with that mini game layer, or you know, I don't, I don't really like calling it a mini. Yeah, that's layer, why I was calling it manual crafting. I know because it gets really confusing <laughs> when you say mini games because it is not mini games. <laughs> Agreed, it's not. It is a unique gameplay layer. However, um, what I would say is that there's still some discussion about whether or not that occurs on a craft by craft basis, or if it occurs at the certification level. Mm. Right. So when you're certifying up you participate in the uh, that gameplay layer. But what I would say is uh, hold off on that for a moment. We're still working on that. We will give an update when we're ready. Okay. Also, putting things into a core functional state allows us to test some of those core systems and features so that we can kick out all the bugs that are potentially there. And believe me, we've fixed a lot of them already. So, And there's plenty more that will come along the way as we move towards that more manual crafting process. Um, and then the next one here is, will the skin of the weapons have slight changes depending on the rarity that it's crafted? Ooh, I asked that. Yes. Yeah, you saw there <clears throat> that the... Uh... Oh, no. Ad break. Sag break. Oh, my God. It's already almost midnight. Holy shit. Oh my god, I got another ad after this, Sag. Not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. The rarity of that sword was heroic, and when it equip when it was equipped, you saw some effects that were kind of pulsating up the weapon. Yeah. Um, those types of effects will be yielded the higher quality and or rarity that the weapon is. Oh, nice. Um, so it's something that also is visually conveyed to other players, uh, if not from... Yeah, that's a badass weapon. But from, you know, uh, um, uh, getting some data point on the equipment that, that another player has. Um, so yes, there are some effects that get scaled up when that happens. Yes. All right, we got two more and then we'll move on to the next segment. Otherwise we'll be here all day because <laughs> Vagnar Roshan keep adding them, which is awesome. Um, the next one here is can a player of any profession level learn any recipe or do I have to be like a certain level to learn the recipes? Probably have to be a certain level. Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, I know we've gone back and forth on that in the past. Um, I believe that currently, uh, you might need to have the appropriate uh, on ability head. to craft the recipe in order to learn it. 
Um, I believe that's the current approach, uh, but I could be wrong on that. I'll have to double check. And like Stephen said before, everything's subject to change as we test things, as you guys experience things, as you provide your feedback, we adjust things as well. Um, and then the last one here is, can a player equip multiple of the same types of bags or are bags unique to yes. characters in some way? No, you can, you can equip multiple of the same types of bags. You All can right. be highly specialized. Cool, cool. Um, and I think there was a tangential one here was, can people put these crafted bags on their mules as well? Um, like their mount put craft i'm sorry my battery just said it's about to die sorry say again the say crafted uh can they put the crafted bags on their mules as well like the, the satchels uh, on their bags no <laughs> no the mules use the cargo system um so the cargo okay. system is a uh, crate based uh you have to acquire the crates and then you can equip them to the vehicles and or mules um mules cap out uh, uh at the small crate value um and you can add to that crate um while in the wild okay all right well, from there, That's good to know. move on to our studio update. I don't know if you want to share some deets on how we're doing, where we're at in regards to studio goodness, but... Um, They've hired for some people. Asking about all of that jazz. Yeah, no, absolutely. Things are going great at the studio. We have gotten some, um, some really talented uh, team members who have joined us over the course of this last month um, that we're very excited about to have uh, uh, with the team. Um, we are in the process of winding down for the year, obviously. Um, the studio goes on break from the 22nd until January 3rd, uh, and we have a lot of plans to get things done January before 2nd, the 22nd. Right? Oh, until the 2nd, sorry, my bad. Second, yeah. Got it. Um, whoops, the studio's like, oh, we're getting an extra day. No, yeah, just... <laughs> it's like, I just want to, because I know a lot of them watch the stream. I don't want them to be like, oh. I know, yeah, 22nd to the 2nd, good call. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have a lot of plans, obviously, to get some things done here before the end of the year. <clears throat> um, we will be finishing up our Milestone 7, which is a big, big, big milestone for us, um, obviously. Uh, but um, yeah, a lot of things going great at the studio right now. Yeah, we're trying to plan some little fun things that we can do as a team, too, for, for December. Um, we yeah. always try to do, I think we always do like a Christmas sweater contest and we, yes. we have fun. We try to, we try to, we're going to do a, I think we're going to do, do a movie as well. We've got some gifts yeah, going working, out to the team. I'm working out the event details on that. So yeah, nice. we're, we're going to prep some stuff. I know people uh, who are, our uh, staff are probably, like, Ooh. <laughs> um, but we'll announce that later internally. Nice. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely Rocking Good for them having we fun. We talked about this in a previous live stream, but our attrition rate. The toxic thing to say would be like fix game, people do play game. Here and there, but but uh, it's well, it's crazy. You gotta have like, fun. It is kind of crazy. You can't like burn out. Twelve plus percent, and well, right now with layoffs, we're like, it's insane. We're like one percent or two. Yeah, we're like two percent, <laughs> I think. Um, but yeah. yeah, so it's very very low. Um, beyond that, let's move on to character goodness. Uh, so the first thing you see is that we are starting Hot. to kind of change up our Kalar starting gear. Uh, we're kind of re-addressing uh, those, changing them. You're going to see these for all of the races as we move forward. Um, but Hot boy, hot girl. Share your feedback and thoughts on them as we uh, continue. Yeah, the fabric Looking looks great. so good. Yeah. Let those go through. Pants are shiny. This just looks so good. Of course, lighting changes yeah. everything. So it depends on like where you are in game, how the lighting is going to look on the armors and stuff like that. The next thing here is a copper weapon set. You're probably going to see these for copper? every type of material. So get, I think you've seen some of them for from previous materials too in the past. Hmm. Um, but you'll probably be seeing more of those as we move Interesting. A lot of weapons and stuff are being, weapons and armors are being made. Tons of them. It's a very rich, diverse grouping of, of itemization that can be progressed it's through going the crazy, questing, yeah. drops, and crafting. It almost reminded me a little bit of RuneScape. Uh, speaking of which, we have some Carfin weapons. We have a dagger and a focus that are being worked on nice. right now. Um, I think we've shown some of the other Carfin weapons in the past. Do well. like daggers. Daggers yeah, do be cool. A few in there. Because um, obviously that's going to be a fun dungeon. Um, and then we have the Scarlet Remembrance, the little ring that we had. The lore for this is Aww, really sweet. Cool. Um, so if you haven't read it, I would highly recommend. Um, and then we have the Fey Guards, which this nice. was a contention. Some people loved this set and some people didn't. <laughs> um, but now you're seeing the 3D render of it, which looks, looks great. Yeah. 
I mean, different, I didn't buy it, which I think but nice. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Bloomfest, which is from that same set. That's a cute horse. Oh, I love which it. Beautiful. And then Who we did go, this one? This one, Bloomfest, was uh, our wonderful intern, Marlene. Nice. Oh, my God. Yeah. Marlene. Get a shout out, Marlene. Very cool. Um, and then we have the mature, uh, mature drill spider. Oop. Uh, this isn't a T pose, so the stinger, little spiky thing is, you know, would be up, not flat like that. <laughs> um, and then we have the rain rock fawn. Ooh, that's sick. Turn table for this one too. Hell yeah! So cool. That's dope as hell. There's gonna be some interesting creatures in the world. The different materials in the game too. Oh yeah, A little corrupt version of it. Yeah. Oh. Oh no. Turns red. And, this yeah. one is one of my favorites. This is the Shoal Skipper. Shoal we Skipper. That this is what we all look like after Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to to ride that thing in the in the ocean and just like lay down a bunch of mines for ships and stuff. That would be crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. Mines? He's plotting his revenge. Just I mean, mines. Like, just have like a a squad of these. Oh, <laughs> that'd be so water. fun to see a squad of them. Oh my gosh. Uh, in Alpha One, we all went in the water. We were all on those turtles, you remember? And yep. then we did the barrel roll all in a row, like a wave. Do, 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 do. Yes, do you remember that? that? So I remember. That was so fun. We, I think it was fun. with the PI folks when we did that. I don't know if the PI folks remember, <laughs> um, it. but it was a lot of fun. Um, that's what happens in private testing. You do weird things because we were we were having everybody line up and they were like, run to the shore because we were trying to test having a lot of people in one area. I remember that. That was, that was actually an alpha one. I was there for that. <laughs> um, and with that, we are heading on to our Q&A. So thank you to our amazing artists. Obviously, they work on way more things than that. Um, but we just try to sprinkle in. A Maybe they did it in PI area. too, but I know we did it in uh, alpha one. Um, sometimes I ask them for additional things that they're not quite ready to share, but I'm like, come on, people will like it. Um, and of course we keep some stuff for you guys so that you, or they showcased it. I think um, that maybe they showcased so we'll it to our Q and a, uh, if, if they did it with the PI folks, they've, they, 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 uh, from our forums, we always put these up in advance when we announce, they showed the, so that with the turtle mount following us on all the social, you'll be notified of that. Um, and of course on the forums, the first question here is from Nice Gaming. Thank you, Nice, for also making amazing content. We always love uh, seeing that. They wanted nice. about new player experience. And is there a plan to have a tutorial or quest detailing corruption, the flagging system, um, et cetera, as new players enter Vera? Absolutely. Um, that is not <laughs> something, however, you will be noticing in Alpha 2. Um, we call this, obviously, our first-time user experience. The first time user experience is something that's going to have a lot of love and attention during betas, uh, but is not going to have much attention during alpha two. But it is intended for us to have a very in-depth uh, first time user experience to kind of introduce players to the number of different systems, right? Nice. They're not going to be super in-depth. We don't believe that first time user experiences should handhold players through all of the processes and reveal the world, so to speak, but just to give them a shallow touch uh, for these systems so that they understand the concepts uh, and and essentially how to how to navigate. But I mean, that's kind of what the cert certification thing is for like lumberjacking and stuff is. We've been trying to take a more tangible. Ah. Fucking ads, dude. God, I'm hungry. I'm going to order food. What I gotta do to get some food, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm hungry. ...process of like you learn, you are learning through the game and not always through windows popping up at you too. Ooh, um, I'm out. The next question is from Nera, who wants to know about stolen glint. This, it was a, this was a contentious question after you talked about this on the Caravan live stream. So I think this is a great one to also clarify. So I'm glad it got picked in the random generator wait what is um, it the question is will a character be able to loot their own corpse and retrieve their dropped glint as normal glint again or is it forever stolen glint the second that the character dies Ooh. does this also mean that if my friends loot my body 
and gives me my glint back. It's considered stolen. Ooh, that's interesting. Here was that you die and then your your glint becomes stolen glint, but then if you lose yeah, it, no, it's the, weird the glint, for it to the, be stolen. The the glint does not become stolen on death. It becomes stolen on looted on looting. And if, if as long as it's able, not you, right? Correct. Yeah. If okay. You're, if you're that able makes to sense. Loot your own body, uh, it will not be converted into stolen glint. Um, if, however, another player, regardless of their affiliation, uh, loots the body, it will then be converted. Uh, the glint will be sunk, and the stolen glint will replace. Your friends can steal stuff from you. It is true. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and of course, the next one is from Lashing, and they want to know about NPC levels. Will mob level keep scaling past player max a level as an indicator for power level. I think this is more in regards to uh, at high level, will there still be challenging combat for me beyond that? Wait, so what's the question? Will mob level keep scaling past the max player level? Yes, yes. Uh, when the game, both in alpha two and when the game launches, there will be monsters whose technical level is above that of the cap. Um, and the intent there is obviously, again, to provide um, some level of, of challenge um, that exceeds uh, a comparable level uh, challenge rating. Nice. Um, yes, that is expected. All right. And then Neurotoxin wants to know about crafting agency. Uh, what percentage of an item specifically, like a weapon that hits corruption target or corrupted targets harder, will be defined specifically by blueprint, material, character, skill? the station and region where it was crafted and by the player's own selective inputs. So I think this is a pretty meaty question, but just, I guess, kind of breaking it yeah. up. What, where do the power elements come from percentage wise per uh, the different elements of crafting? Well, a big chunk of it's going to come from the static recipe value, right? Um, that's going to drive a lot of the stat block. <clears throat> and then as we saw here, you will be able to influence the the quality of the recipe and the distribution of stats within the stat block uh, based on the components uh, that are dedicated to the craft. Right. Um, so that that presents a, a wide variety of potential output from a single recipe. Um, recipes have the ability to to gain exp recipes themselves can gain experience. You can unlock. Um, uh, different results through different compositional contributions of resources. And that in and of itself is kind of an exploration progression that crafters will have access to. Nice. And our next one is about crafting innovation from Old Cat. Um, and they want to know, will players have the ability to innovate within the crafting system, creating unique items or designs? If so, how much customization can players expect when it comes to crafting their own gear or items? Yeah, I think this is uh, pretty much the same kind of answer that I just gave, um, which is that obviously there are statically defined um, <clears throat> there are statically defined an, an array of results that can come out of a particular recipe. And your ability to unlock those results is predicated on what composition of resources you contribute to crafting that particular weapon type. Um, and so in that sense, yes, uh, crafters will have the ability to, to um, uniquely create certain types of the recipe's results based on how they're contributing resources to it. Yeah, I think this question um, is more However, they specifically can't just about manifest. Creating, yeah. Manifesting their I was just own say, recipe. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, you, yeah exactly. Uh, the 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 result has to have a corresponding recipe definition, and so in that sense, it isn't completely customizable to the point where the player gets to uniquely create these uh, particular items, uh, but rather they are discovering what creations are possible with each recipe type. Okay, and then um, uh, I'm sorry if I, I say your name wrong. Just DM me on Discord or something and or forums and let me know how to actually pronounce it. Uh, mo, mo, molu, Moluxtos. <laughs> uh, they want to know about crafting recipes. Will the recipe book be account bound or player character bound? Will there be account wide sharing recipes? So can I share my recipes with my other characters or do I have to do them per character? This brings us back to the yeah, alt the question. Yeah. <laughs> and the alt question was, 
you know, how do we feel about people making alts in order to kind of corner the um you have to get mastery profession recipes on every character if you learn a recipe it stays on that character and if you want another character to have access to those recipes they have to achieve those recipes in order to do so um, fair. and so in that sense we're not making it absolutely easy goals, fair right it is an equitable amount of effort required in order to achieve uh, the type of payoff you want from these alt characters. All right. And then Roni Scaponi. I always love that name. Uh, they wanted about gathering skills. Do gatherers need to spec into group-based gathering at the expense of solo gathering? Uh, do they need to? No. Uh, no, I do not believe so. So they can spec into, they can do both equally. Yeah, correct. And then Tiger Blue Eyes wants to... Wait, hold on, hold on. I need, I need to replay that. They wanted about gathering skills. Do gatherers need to spec into group-based gathering at the expense of solo gathering? Blue okay. Orioles in a higher level recipe, is that allowed? Yes. Going cross tiers, for example, using high level material. Yeah, correct. Okay. And then Tiger Blue Eyes wants to know about crafting materials. Are crafting materials going cross tiers? For example, using high-level material in low-level recipes or low-level uh, materials in a higher-level recipe. Is that allowed? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Phantom MX or Phantom X wants to know about uh, crafting skill. As character artisanship skills improve, will RNG in the process go down? That so is like, a good question. Yeah. As um, I level up, am I more likely to succeed? That would be good. To a, to a degree. Um, That'd be well, good. Right now, we don't really have a failure chance when it comes to crafting. The, the only enchanting chances that we place on itemization live more within the enchant realm and within the uh, deconstruction realm um, <clears throat> uh, and socketing, like. That's where RNG comes into play. The recipe is a relatively um, uh, high Static. degree of certainty when inputting things. Um, you may not know what the outcome of that input is going to look like, but I wouldn't call that necessarily RNG, RNG for failure because you can't necessarily fail that. Um, so, yeah, I hope hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. Uh, and then drunk. There's basically no RNG unless it comes to Will every enchanting. Profession be able to make some form of a consumable. No, not every crafting profession will be able to make a form of consumable. All right. I'm assuming like that's potions. Our... That's like alchemy and stuff. That's Ooh, not. We made it you're not gonna have like a consumable uh, for lumberjacking. <laughs> like of what? Course, uh, we do have, um, you know, some reminders again for you all. Uh, just. Head on over to our forums. We would love your feedback. Forums.ashesofcreation.com. We have a forum feedback thread already up there for artisanship. Um, so definitely let us know your thoughts, what you think you liked from it, what you'd like to this see improved. This is a long stream. It was a long stream. Yeah, this is a long stream. Uh, the Three hours. For the, God damn. Um, the 4K version of the artisanship segment it will be up on YouTube right when this is over. So you can go watch that, pause it, Woo! look back, so you can really give us feedback on what your thoughts are. Um, and of course, our team is going to be creating a report for the dev team, which is always uh, something that is, is. Yep, 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 yep. I'm about to go make my video on this. Uh, I did want to check. I think it's right around this area. Hello. Remember in the gathering stream, you know, we're showing off. Um, He's he really appears at night. able to get some moonbeam over here. We're now? just going to mute this, actually. Like, he runs over like, this orange flower. The bush. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to skip because, like, where did I say it? Well, I think he gets this. And then where is it? This is snowdrop right here, this white stuff. So 
Doesn't he walk over a bush at some point? Ooh. 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 Moon bell. See? He's got moon bell right here. So you can get it during the day, but it doesn't bloom until night, right? Where's that? Wait, were they out crafting here? Moonbell. Yeah, see, it's the same thing. Still Moonbell. You can get it during the day. That's cool. Um... I'm it just sticks out during the night. 